The drought in the desert is over. Yeah, I know this week we had uh, what looked like winter temperatures in our first bit of rain in a while. But what I'm talking about is GCU basketball being back in the house. That's right. Back at GCU Arena, the Lopes are hoping it will be a great homecoming. After dropping a few games on the road, GCU happy to be back in the house of the Havocs tonight to take on the Seattle University Red Hawks. And the Red Hawks have been red hot as of late. They have a great record at home. On the road, not so much. So the Lopes hoping to exploit that tonight. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Lopes pregame show here on Your View. All right. Well, the Lopes, they are back at home. And just like Dorothy clicked her heels three times, I bet the Lopes players are saying there is no place at like home. Because here at GCU, they are 13-2. and two. And after dropping three straight whack games out on the road the past couple weeks, well, the Lopes, happy to get home for some home cooking, but also to play in the friendly confines here at GCU Arena. It's been a busy couple weeks here on campus. Softball, baseball, they teed off their season. But we are just a week out from being March, which the madness means it's just around the corner. So the Lopes trying to gear up in these final games against WAC opponents to get ready for that WAC tournament in Las Vegas. I know our broadcast team is ready to go, so without further delay, I bring in the guys who will be calling the action tonight, Barry Patel and Scott Williams. And guys, it's been a while since we've been out here talking basketball, but I'm sure after those rough losses on the road, some great competition, but not exactly the results. The Lopes probably happy to be back here at GC Arena. Yeah, there's always something special about coming home, isn't there? And uh, they need to come home after a uh, three-game losing streak, the first time in some three years. Yeah, it was very tough out on the road. Good to be back here. The home fans, the Havocs are already in the house standing up ready to cheer this team on to victory. They got three games now to right the ship before the end of the uh, conference schedule and then the beginning of the Western Athletic Conference uh, Tournament at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. But this team needs to right the ship, no doubt about it. Yeah, they got to get back to playing GCU basketball, getting stops on defense, using the transition game to score early points on offense before the team has a chance to set up. They'll take on a Seattle Redhawks team that they handled pretty well at Seattle at Key Arena, 73-57. Yeah, real tough place to play. I mean, Seattle's 16 and two up there at Key Arena, and only three and seven on the road. They've been playing much better in the Western Athletic Conference where they're eight and three, and they've won eight of their last 10 basketball games. Oscar Freire has been lighting it up despite the three game losing streak, and he had some big numbers against Seattle, 18.7 boards in that game. As uh, the Lopes won it on the road at a place, well, it's been difficult to win, but they took care of Seattle, and Seattle is coming into this game winners of three straight. Yeah, they're doing a fantastic job right now. They're they're uh, averaging more than 80 points a game in their last three game win streak, and all those you know, games are uh, tough against tough opponents. So. Lopes have to be focused right from the very beginning. They've had a chance to get into practice, get in that lab, correct some of the mistakes that they had on the road, see what they can come up with tonight. You see Seattle University just ahead of GCU. Utah Valley is here on Saturday. So the Wolverines and the Red Hawks above the Lopes as uh, they come into GCU Arena. Now Seattle comes in 8-3 in the conference. One guy that they're going to have to go up against, and he had 23 against New Mexico State, Oscar Freire. Oscar Freire, he ah. was the one player out on the road that absolutely brought it with him. And he had 29 minutes of action, 15 points a game. He shot 59% uh, from the field, 13 of 22. was absolutely fantastic from behind, behind the uh, three-point line, shooting 8 of 11. Wow, 8 of 11, 59% from the field. 15 points per game average for Oscar Freire. He'll need to light it up here against Seattle tonight against these Red Hawks team. One guy that uh, maybe needs to fuel off of Oscar Freire is Josh Braun. He needs to just let it go. The mayor's got to, yeah, he's got to relax. The mayor's got to find his game. He's been pressing out on the road, hasn't been getting it done from behind the arc or from the field. I like when he's aggressive. You know, shoot the ball when he catches it. No hesitation, catching it from the fan in transition uh, and driving the ball to the basket, drawing fouls. Get himself to the free throw line. Take that pressure off. Visualize that ball going through the basket from the free throw line. Yeah, he needs to definitely improve those numbers. Hopefully the Havocs and the uh, home cooking will right the ship for Josh Braun here before the team 
get set for conference play in Las Vegas. Now, Jim Hayford, first-year head coach at Seattle, doing a really great job. Has three graduate transfers helping him out. They see a lot of minutes, but the team is on a roll. They're on a roll right now. We talked about the three-game winning streak, but this team is on, on poise to win 20 games in D1 history. First time they've done that since the 60s. So he's really got them playing. He's got everybody bought into a team concept. Matej Kavis is a player that we'll be taking a look at throughout the course of this game. He's their leading scorer. Kavis is a three-point bomber. This kid is absolutely fantastic from behind the arc. He's got 74 threes on the season, which is good for uh, eighth in the nation in far as three-point field goal percentage. He's number one in the WAC, and he's number one in three-pointers made in the WAC. So Lopes has got to find him either in the half-court offense or in transition and just flat run him off the line. Don't worry about trying to get up with a hand in his face. Get up on him, crowd, and make him put the ball on the floor. Eighth overall, 48% from the arc, while the Lopes come in as one of the best in the nation at three-point defense. So we'll see how that matchup goes tonight. Dave, we'll send it back over to you. Well, it should be fun to see how the numbers on paper play out tonight on the court. But I wonder from a standpoint on how the Lopes are doing from mentally and just emotionally after going up against the competition on the road, coming back with three conference losses. But how do you build that confidence back up? Because you want it to be strong heading to Vegas next month for that tournament. Absolutely. The great thing for Coach Marley is that he's got three seniors on his program. They've seen a little bit of everything over the course of their collegiate career. So. Nothing that they can't handle. They realize that they're playing down in a slump, but they got to get back to doing what they do best, and that's doing it on the defensive line. Uh, defensive end, Barry, like you said, guarding that three-point line, choking off the middle, not allowing second-chance opportunities and no need points in the paint. That's GCU basketball. That's what we hope to see on display tonight, guys. Don't go too far. You have a game to call. Meanwhile, folks at home, Sit back, let us do the work. When we come back, we are going to talk about, talk to the man who knows it all when it comes to basketball. That's right, we're talking about Dan Marley. He sits down with Barry to talk about how the team is in need of a couple of W's this weekend. Is it attainable? Well, coding to coach, he's got the game plan to make it happen. We'll fill you in on the details right after this as the little pregame show continues here on your view. Hey you, are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in, we're going on an adventure. Here in Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to do, so much to experience. When I started my degree program at Grand Canyon University, I knew I was embarking on a journey. I never expected it to be such an adventure. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you're never more than a few short hours from something worth remembering. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Study hard, play hard, never stop moving. What are you waiting for? Come earn your degree in fewer than four years while exploring everything Arizona has to offer. So, you ready? Find your purpose in Arizona. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. Utah Valley comes into this week with a huge momentum boost after wins against conference leaders New Mexico State and UTRGV last week. The Lopes lost to Utah Valley early in conference play. They'll look to split the season series. Be sure to tune in this Saturday, starting with the Lopes pregame show at 6.30 for GCU Basketball on GCU TV and your view. Welcome to the Lopes pregame show from GCU Arena, back in the friendly confines of GCU Arena for the final three games of the regular season. Home sweet home, and uh, this is where you get some home cooking because you guys are really? mighty, mighty hungry for some home cooking, aren't you? Well, I mean... We're hungry for a win. And I don't yeah, know if home right, cooking. Kind of yeah, well, yeah. I wouldn't. You know, home cooking is not going to do that. Our guys, we have an unbelievable crowd. Everybody knows that, but we got to play better. Uh, and I'm anxious to see if we do that. We've had a, a really good week of practice. We went hard. Um, got to get back to basics and not worry about shooting or am I making shots. It's about rebounding. It's defense. It's playing harder than your opponent. Three-game losing streak, first time in upwards of three years for you guys. UTRG. All is not well in GCU. No, land. no, the uh, the the uh, the natives are restless here. Who? As, uh, well, I don't, you know, okay. you know, people are wondering what what's happening here, but you know, tough ones on the road. UTRGV, a much improved team. New Mexico State, always a tough place to play. Well, we played we played well against New Mexico State. We did. I mean, that was a place that had a sold-out Pan Am Arena, twelve thousand people in. 
uh, that was a game that, uh, like a lot of games, uh, we were right there and we probably should have won it. And we just couldn't close it out for whatever reason. Uh, UTRGV in Bakersfield was a totally different story. Uh, wasn't happy with our effort. Uh, got out rebounded. Uh, both teams shot a, a good percentage against us, which really doesn't usually happen. And we struggled. Um, and we've been doing that all year long. It uh, seems that we play against teams like a New Mexico State, uh, Boise State, whoever, uh, on the road. We play really well. Uh, we didn't do that against UTRGV or Bakersfield, and that's what uh, is disappointing. You know, your post-game and radio interviews are always kind of a must uh, listen to with, with Potter and Kuiper. And you mentioned the seniors uh, against Bakersfield. The, the, obviously, the stat sheet showed that, that they didn't uh, Well, really you know, Josh, up. the whole trip, he made four field goals in three games. Uh, Keontae uh, uh, was the leader in our, on, on our team in shots attempted and averaged three rebounds. Uh, he had two offensive rebounds in three games. Uh, Casey's playing better. Um, but uh, especially Keontae and Josh have to do a better job. Uh, it's not Keontae's job to score. It's Keontae's job to rebound, be the toughness, to be the physical presence. Uh, I think sometimes he wants to score the ball. He's mm -hmm. not that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told him, I said, either you've got to start rebounding and you're not playing anymore. That's, that's your job. And uh, we'll see what that happens tonight. And Josh has just got to find a way. It, it's, it's time. We all love Josh. Uh, Josh has put so much pressure on himself. Um, he understands what he means to our team. Greatest kid in the world, has done everything for this university. No matter what happens, uh, he'll be great. But he has to snap out of it. And tonight, hopefully the night, we have three home games left and we're on the tournament. But we need Josh to play well. The freshman, you know, Laver was playing really well, piling up some points. Blumberg's kind of showed some flashes earlier this season. <laughs> is, is there a lot of pressure on the two guys? Alessandro's no playing well. He yeah. just got in foul trouble. Uh, you know, he had, he's been in foul trouble. He scored nine straight at New Mexico State in the second half and picked up three fouls within the first four minutes and had been fouled out. Um, it's, it's tough for him. Roberts uh, just hasn't had it all year long. Uh, this is an adjustment for him. He is a very, very talented kid. He's just got to learn to play harder. Uh, when his shot's not falling like it isn't right now, he's got to be able to do other things. Uh, but I'm not worried about our freshmen. We have some very talented freshmen. Damari, mm -hmm. Roberts. I think Alessandro's been great. He's got to figure a way to stay on the floor and not get in foul trouble. Um, but he is a very, very talented kid. So all three of those guys are going to be fine. I'm more worried about Keontae and Josh and, and Casey's done a good job but Kante's just got to he's not a scorer he's a rebounder he's got to <laughs> rebound and and Josh has got to snap out of it you've got a pretty good sophomore too seven of the eight last games double digit scoring for Oscar Ferrer yep Oscar uh continues to get better um he's a guy that uh, again when he shoots the ball well he's 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 really good but he can't go into games thinking about shooting the ball well he's got to uh, play defense rebound uh, he's got a great attitude. I love Oscar. Um, he is a part of uh, this Lopes team that, that's going to be really good, uh, you know, down the line. And uh, when he usually plays well, uh, New Mexico State, he was unbelievable. Uh, we have a chance to win games. Yep. Um, but like I said, he's a guy that uh, doesn't have to think about a shot. He's got to do other things. And when he has a lot of energy and plays hard, uh, he usually is, he's pretty good on the offensive end. These are two big games too, as far as positioning in in the uh, in the seedings for the WAC tournament with two teams that are ahead of you right well, now. Well, yeah, and to be honest with you, we, we got to win. We got to be playing better. If we're playing our best basketball, I don't think there's a team we can't beat in the WAC. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly believe that, uh, no matter what seed we're at. Uh, but if we're not playing well, and if we lose tonight, and we lose against Utah Valley and then Bakersfield, then we're not playing well. We're not gonna we're not gonna last very long. Uh, so I don't care if we're the eighth seed or the first seed or whatever. If we're playing well, uh, there's teams that we're going to have to beat, obviously. But um, I think we can beat anybody in the league. I really feel that strongly about our team. So we just got to find a way to snap out of it, stop feeling sorry for ourselves, and uh, find a way to win basketball games. Jim Hayford, first-year head coach here at Seattle. You guys were able to win at Key Arena earlier this season. This team's coming in riding a three-game winning streak. They don't have a lot of depth. Seems like they put pile up some minutes with their starters, but uh, Kavas and others doing well. Playing seven guys basically yeah. right now, but they have a bunch of grad transfers and three Kavas, who's really good as a sophomore. Uh, they just spread the floor. They got a seven foot three kid in there to the center, Menzies, yeah. and then they just uh, kind of take you one on one. They spread the floor. They drive the ball. They're a terrific three point shooting team. Uh, we played well there and did a great job in the second half. Uh, defensively, they're good, too. So this is going to be a really good test for us. All right. Good luck tonight. All right. Thank you. All right. Head coach Dan Marley, our guest, stay with us. More of the Lopes pregame show continues from GCU Arena. It's almost time to hit the beach.
Beach Volleyball at GCU, that is, will share the remarkable story of one of the Lopes' top players when we come back, so stick around. Earning your RN to BSN degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. Finding your purpose takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience delivering our accredited RN to BSN program 100% online. Graduate in as few as 16 months learning from full-time practicing nurse faculty in small classes. Integrate your education with your faith and Christian worldview. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back, a live look inside GCU Arena as we count you down to tip off tonight between the Lopes and the Red Hawks. Lopes happy to be back in the house of the Havocs, getting ready for this game after three losses on the road. It was a tough one, but now everything is looking good. Hope well, their home sweet home. And while they're home, you know you can be a part of the fun, even if you're not able to make it out here to GCU Arena. Find us on social media using the hashtag Lopes Rising on both Twitter and Instagram, and you just might be a part of our broadcast. You can see those tweets rolling across the screen right now. We want to hear from you, so use that hashtag Lopes Rising and be a part of all the fun. Well, I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for being dialed in here to Your View, Cox Channel 4, where we are counting you down to tip off here on the Lopes pregame show. Plenty more hoops talk coming your way. But first, we're going to switch gears, but not completely, because we're going to talk a little bit about the story of Michael Jordan. You may have heard it. No, not about the one where he dominated the NBA for decades. We're talking about how, as a teenager, he was cut from his high school team, only to go on and arguably become the greatest basketball player of all time. Well, the GCU beach volleyball team has an unlikely hero, sto hero story of its own. Molly Turner was cut from her high school team and then overlooked for any scholarships despite having two national titles to her name. Well, now she's on her way to being a two-time All-American on the sand for GCU. My recruiting process was really interesting. No colleges really wanted me, which was interesting because I won the U18 National Championship for USAV, so I thought like a lot of offers would flood my way and none did, nobody even emailed me back. So I found GCU and the coach told me that they didn't have any more spots, but I was absolutely relentless, like I wanted to play so bad. So I kept emailing her, I emailed her probably 20 times and finally she called me back and she said, hey, I don't have a spot for you, you're welcome to walk on and I, without hesitation, said yes. <laughs> The dedication it's taken, honestly, uh, a lot of people have called me crazy because <laughs> I really don't like taking off days because I, whether that be watching film or going on a treadmill for 10 minutes or coming out and getting reps or going hard on the, in the training days, I don't take time off and I think that's made me the player I am because although I get tired and I am exhausted, I focus on what I want to achieve and even post-college, like I really just have huge dreams and huge goals that I want to achieve and you know sitting in my bed one day watching TV eating poorly is not something that's going to get me there so the goals that I have there's little things that are going to get me there and that's what I focus on every single day. I want to be a two-time All-American. Uh, I want to lead this team to a national championship appearance and or championship. It's doable and I am not nervous at all and I think that it is something that we should all be expecting. We have the skills and the girls and the mindset to go further than we even are setting our goals to. And I'm really excited to see what actually happens because it's just this, like the weight of season coming is aggravating because every day we say 30 days, 29 days, 22 days of practice left. Like it's on our mind every day. And to finally step on that court against Cal Poly for a season opener is gonna be unreal.
building this program with Kristen and then also from the past years, Kenzie and Shannon, I think we put our name on the maps, not only ourselves, but GCU. We were the small D1 school before they were here, Kristen was here. Coming to this program initially, I just thought I would be an asset, not even someone that would be a leader or someone that would help build this program so much. And to know that my name is associated with this school and besides Kristen is unbelievable. I think that wherever I go past college, I, I know I'm gonna carry this program with me and like hold myself to a higher standard so that everyone knows that this program is just more than beach volleyball. And Molly is in the house tonight. She will be honored tonight at the game for all she's done, both out on the sand courts as well as uh, in the classroom. And she's joined by her teammates. They are coming off a 17 and eight record with a number 10 ranking last year. So the GCU beach volleyball team serves up 2018 this Friday with a doubleheader starting at 5 p.m. against Cal Poly and LSU, the Lopes are led by Molly, that All-American, and also incoming freshman sensation Tegan DeFalco, who was an All-American freshman indoor player for GCU this past fall. Be sure to come out and support the Lopes, and uh, also remember you can support the Lopes tonight. We're talking basketball, and uh, they are the hot topic here as they return home. Coming up, we are gonna go inside to get the inside scoop with the Lopes senior reporter and insider, Paul Coro, Coro's corner up next. More hoops action coming your way here on the Lopes Free Game Show. My name is Anthony Perez and I earned my master's in education at Grand Canyon University. I feel that the degree program at GCU definitely got me ready and prepared me to be an agent of change so that way I can lead my classroom to find innovative ways of solving the problems in education in the state of Arizona. Grand Canyon University definitely has a vibrant campus that has many resources that are accessible. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. I'm Kate Longworth, and I'm joined now by the Lopes Insider, Paul Coro. We call it Coro's Corner, so let's get right to the details right now. The team's been on the road. You're just saying it's been a while since we've seen each other. Yeah. It's been a while since the Lopes players have been here uh, seeing the Havocs, and uh, now back on their home court. I'm guessing happy after dropping those three losses. What does the team need to do to rebound these next few games here at home heading into that WAC tournament? Yeah, it's really essential. they got to get back to their brand of basketball, uh, the defense, the rebounding. The shooting's been off these three games. They've, they've struggled from the field, but you know that's not been the strength of this team all year long. They win games by outworking other teams, grinding on defense. That's why they're 10th in the nation on uh, field goal percentage, first and three-point percentage. So that brand, being here is going to help big time. You know, they've just had a road struggles all season, but here they're 13-2. and two. So these are essential games because they need momentum going into the WAC tournament. And, and to win these three games, you can't just roll into the tournament and win three in a row. They need to get some momentum going in, start playing well, and really need some of the seniors to step up and get back to establishing Alessandro Labor as that post central point for the offense. And the sixth man in full effect here tonight at the arena. The students have missed the game for sure. And uh, as you talk about that WAC tournament, both the women and men's team will be participating in that for the first time since being Division yeah. One eligible. And I know they're excited for that. It's surprise, surprise, because the whole Pals team, wow, what they have done in a short amount of time under her leadership. So what are you anticipating for both teams? Because it seems like now on the men's side, so it could be anyone's tournament, really, with New Mexico State taking a couple losses. Yeah, I mean, that's the one thing you could feel good about. They could have beaten New Mexico State twice. They've had about four or five losses that were five points or less that they easily could have flipped, but they haven't closed those games, and that's where we're waiting to see happen. They haven't had that signature victory. I think the best win of the season probably was against this Seattle team yeah. when they were on the road against a good team and shut them out for the last seven minutes of that game. Now, for the women, they're they're almost in a better situation. Tonight, they're in Seattle. They're already tied for third with Seattle. 
they win the night. They're only a game back in New Mexico State. Uh, you know, they've really done amazing things that relying on those three seniors big time. Bree Mobley's got to be player of the year in the conference. She, she's just doing it all for them and has expanded her game as the season went on. Uh, it's been wonderful to watch. And then you switch your gears, head out to the diamond. You say we haven't seen each other, but we actually did see each other um, with at GC Ballpark at Brazzle Field. And wow, what a facility. What a great night. So many people on hand for that wonderful evening. And uh, what was Look at the it like the for you taking it in? The sunset huh? was perfect. <laughs> throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. The game was unreal to that final inning, but Andy Sequence, I imagine, pretty happy with what is ahead for the Lopes. What do you see so far from the baseball program? Yeah, I mean, I think they, they wish they had won the series because they came so close on that Friday night in front of the 3,700 person crowd and all the pomp and circumstance, but they pulled out that Sunday win. They beat the number seven team in the nation. I don't think anybody in the athletic program has had a, a better win than beating a number seven team, especially in a high profile sport like baseball. And then they turned around and had a one run loss to Washington State on Tuesday. So they're right there. They're going to San Diego this weekend. But how about Jake Juan that first night? Uh, you know, 80 plus scouts were there to watch him and some of the TCU players. He was throwing mid 90s, mixing his change and slider. Uh, struck out nine, a career high, you know, shut him out through six. It was really showed that he's going to be that guy that gives him a chance to win every series starting out on Friday night. And I know you have work ahead of you for this game, but real quick, GCU making headlines nationally with that ESPN.com uh, expose on this school. What did you think of that article, and what's that say about GCU athletics program to get so much attention so early yeah. in their Division One journey? Yeah, it was a really full look at GCU too. Look at all aspects of it, pretty well researched actually. And and I think what it says more is that it started out on the college basketball page, and some so many people were looking at it there that it moved to the front page of ESPN.com because there was so much GCU. interest. They don't yeah. they don't move stories to the front <laughs> of the page if they're not getting interest. Very true. Lots of hits, and are we surprised? Not at all. When the Havocs are behind something, it's pretty great, and they are behind this game 100%. So we will be right back, but don't you go anywhere. When we get back, we take a trip around the WAC. I'm Taylor, and I'm getting my Bachelor's of Science degree in Marketing from GCU. Moving on campus was one of the best decisions ever. Once I moved on campus, what really made me feel like I was a GCU student was going to all the events and getting plugged into all the different things that we have going on here. One of the things that makes me feel most safe on campus is just the whole community aspect. Like we're a big family here and just knowing that I'm welcome with open arms and I can just be myself. Being an RA has given me a lot of experience that I think I can carry on through the rest of my life. Between my academic scholarship, my RA scholarship, I've got a lot of school paid for already and what's been nice is that as I've been working throughout school, I've been paying back my loan each summer. The day I graduate, it'll feel awesome because I'll be graduating in three years and I'll have little to no debt. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. 19 and uh, UMKC shooting nearly 50%, UTRGB just 18%. Meanwhile, the GCU women are in action at Seattle University. We'll be following that game throughout tonight's action. They are fighting for second place in the WAC. Nicole Kalsey doing something exciting. And so is Dan Marley's squad here at GCU Arena. They are getting ready for the WAC play next month for that big tournament in Vegas, but it all starts with some victories this week, and that's what the Lopes are hoping. Seattle University, Grand Canyon University basketball coming your way right after this quick break. I'm Christian Talon, and I'm earning my bachelor's in information technology at Grand Canyon University. I really wanted to be able to integrate my faith and career, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to go to GCU. One of the, my favorite ways to do that is by being a part of the life groups on campus. It's a great place to come and study the Bible and have that community experience. Cyber threats are a growing problem for companies and individuals alike. A lot of resources online are under scrutiny of attack. I found it my purpose to try and help businesses and Christian foundations and defend themselves against those attacks. One of the great benefits of going to GCU is that we as students get access to the state-of-the-art IT labs that the university is setting up for us. I really feel like the professors at GCU have invested in me personally. They are always encouraging and providing me with the resources to further my own education and really just grow my interest and passion for technology. 
Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. Grand Canyon University, Arizona's private Christian university, is a top tourism market bustling right in the heart of Phoenix. Join the student team at the GCU Hotel, Canyon 49 Grill, and coffee shop GCBC for real-world learning opportunities. Hospitality students can gain workplace skills and leadership training on the GCU Championship Golf Course featuring brand new amenities. Across every enterprise, you have the chance to network, learn, and grow. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu. To the Red Hawk from Seattle University. Welcome to GCU Basketball alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams. I'm Gary Vitell. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, the Loaf scuffling along, losers of three straight, while the Red Hawks have won three straight, including a 10-point decisive victory against New Mexico State, the leaders in the Western Athletic Conference. But earlier in the year, a big Loaf's win at Key Arena in Seattle. Yeah, they went up there and really got after Seattle, especially in that second half where they dominated. They had just one turnover on route to a 42 to 28 second half took control of that game and we got what a lot of teams have not been able to do in Seattle the 16 and 2 on up in Seattle so looks one of those teams that got a victory up there so it gives them a lot of confidence when they step on the floor tonight to face this opponent and a guy with Plano with a lot of confidence despite the slide is Oscar Freyer at 18 against Seattle 23 at New Mexico State yeah he's been fantastic this three game road trip averaging 15 points a game and he's doing a fantastic job controlling the paint he's shooting 59 percent from the field and he's eight of 11 from behind the arc. There you see it, 15 points per game, eight of 11 from the arc. Amazing for Oscar Freire. How about amazing for Seattle? They're getting three graduate players playing really well for first year head coach Jim Hayford. Matej Kavis, leading scorer, and boy, he can hit from the arc. Yeah, he's a sniper from out there behind the arc, and he flat out gets it done. And this kid is absolutely fantastic. He's Third in the whack and score, and he's first in three-point field goal percentage. He's first in three-point field goals made. Let's got to find him behind the arc. They cannot let Cobbins get out there, get settled, get comfortable behind that arc. Let's get this thing tipped off. Let's send it over to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. once again to the beautiful GCU Arena and tonight's Western Athletic Conference men's basketball matchup between the Red Hawks of Seattle University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Emily Fox, a sophomore majoring in elementary education and a GCU cheerleader. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day you've given us. We thank you for this opportunity to come here and gather to watch this beautiful sport of basketball. God, I pray you place your hand of protection over both the players and the fans tonight. It's in your heavenly name we pray, amen. Thank you, Emily. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the singing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Mountain Ridge High School Chamber Choir under the direction of Abel Dragomir.
College High School Chamber Choir. Emily Fox with our prayer in the Mountain Ridge Chamber Choir. A fan fantastic job with our national anthem. Seattle University, they come in 19 and nine overall. Eight and three in the Western Athletic Conference, two and seven away from Seattle. Their head coach right there, Jim Hayford, in his first season. Let's see his starting five against GCU tonight. We begin with Jordan Hill, Matei Kavas, Rashad Gittens, Josh Hurley, and Aaron Menzies. Yeah, we're going to keep our eye on number 41, Aaron Menzies. They call him Big Sexy at 7 really? 3. Uh, he's 22nd in the nation in offensive rebounds at 3.3 a game. He's 30th in blocks with 59. He's got 11 double doubles, which ranks 34th in the nation. This kid is long and strong. Got a key job early on him. Keep him away from that rim. Bayford spent the last six years at Eastern Washington University. Before that, 10 seasons at Whitworth and two at the University of Sioux Falls. Time to introduce you to Grand Canyon University. Starting five, Casey Benson, Josh Braun, Oscar Freyer, Alessandro Labor, and Keontae Vernon. Number 11, Casey Benson, the fifth year senior. You're going to keep an eye on this guy here. He went for 17 and 10 against UTRGV, but it's not about him tonight. I want to see how he gets the others involved tonight, especially the mayor, Josh Braun, who's been stuck on that launch pad. A good point guard recognizes one of the top players of story and tries to get him going early and often. Let's see if CB tries to get JV going tonight. Dan Barley in his fifth season, the associate head coach is Todd Lee. The assistant coaches are Chris Cremelone and TJ Benson. The director of basketball operations is Luke Dallariba. The special assistant to the head coach is Brendan Sabian. And the graduate assistant is Johnny Hill. The Lopes are looking for their fifth straight win over Seattle. They are 9-1 all time against the Red Hawks. Another great crowd here at GC Arena, the first of three straight on their home court to close out conference play before conference tournament action begins from the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Make sure you get your tickets now. Got your three keys to tonight's game. Huge and sound, Barry. I know you're familiar with that. That's where the fresh water mixes with the salt water. Of course I do. Well, that's what the Globes need to have tonight. They got to have a good mix of up-tempo style of play and a methodical approach. But Seattle is averaging 83 points during this current three-game win streak. Don't want to get a shootout with these guys tonight. In a Pike Place market, uh, Pike, Pike Place market. Fish throwing. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fun. That's where they throw those fishes yep. up there in Seattle. I love that place. But GCU's got to toss them in from behind the arc tonight. Must make and take the long ball tonight. And then the Space Needle. Everybody knows about the Space Needle, right? Well, that's like Seattle U. They're long and they're strong. But the Lopes got to compete in the paint. Points in the paint. Defensive rebounds getting on the offensive glass. And don't be afraid of those shot blockers. Go inside and challenge their big men underneath. Lopes win the opening 10. Fans will remain on their feet till the Lopes hit their opening bucket. Casey Benson. Freyer takes it back. Benson. Labor. Hands it off. Freyer kicks back out. Benson inside. Keontae Vernon turns over Menzi. Not enough. Rebound pulled down by Labor. Nine on the shot clock. Bounce pass. Labor. Foul call. Winston Stiff, one of the officials, Brad Ferry and Rick O'Neill, the others. I like Coach Marley. Throw the big men some bones early, getting them hungry, feed them early, let them go down there and try to operate. And I love that offensive rebound by the big fella, Labor. Labor trying to muscle his way. Vernon picks up another rebound. Uh, 14, Big's though, a, on the shot clock. Right? Big, Big's doing a good job on the glass. Benson. 
up over the top. Three-pointer off the mark. Oh, Braun trying to push that rebound up, but Tavas leaves it there for got, Jordan Hill. They got some early shots inside. Couldn't get anything to fall, but I like the approach of that first possession. Go down low. Hurley, he looking for Kavas. He's guarded by Freyer, kicks back out. Rashad Gittens looks for the three. That's off the mark. Rebound picked up by Freyer, leaves it for Benson. Benson looks over to Marley. He's eyed by Hurley. Freyer looking for the first bucket. Inside, Labor just can't pick up the handle off of Vernon. Uh, they only had 12 uh, turnovers in that game up at Seattle U. Got one early here tonight. This is a nice seal by Vernon. I love that high-low basketball. Held on to that seal a little too long. Vernon led him a little too far. Big's got to get on the same page because that was an easy two points if they could have connected. Hill from Pasadena, California, leaves it for Hurley he from L.A. Hurley he looking to drive on Vernon. Travel. The defense by Keontae Vernon. You nailed it. Keontae Vernon, who has been foul prone at times this season, did a nice job sliding his feet, uh, feet, staying right in front. Doesn't give up too much ground and then forces the, the turnover with the travel. Labor takes it from Benson. Looks for Braun, but Braun swarmed by Hill. Vernon trying to move on Menzies up over the top and in. That's where you go against the shot blocker. You fade away from a shot blocker, you're going to be wearing that Nike swoosh on your forehead. You've got to take it right to that shot blocker's chest. Hill on the near side, Hurley he turns to the bucket, looking for an open lane over Vernon. Right hand short, rebound Labor. A second nice yeah. job by Vernon. Playing tough defense, contesting the shot. Didn't have to realize he didn't have to go for the block, just forced a tough shot. Ooh, off the leg of Hill as Braun was looking in for Labor. All right, almost two and a half minutes into this one yet. Braun hasn't gotten a shot up on that glass. I'm not saying he's not playing well, but a guy that made four field goals on a three-game roadie, he's got to be aggressive. He's got to get a shot in this possession, if not the next. The official talking to Jordan Hill and Josh Braun is that's been the uh, game plan for opposing teams is stick to Josh Braun like glue. Labor trying to move over Hurley. He to fuck fade away. I'll tell you, the Italian Stallion with a nice little jab step, getting the defender to back up, and then knocking down the baseline. Jay. Hill in the corner driving there is Gittins. What's the Red Hawks on the board? Right, Gittins was shot out of a cannon coming out of that corner, went right up over the top of the GCU defender. A grad student from Boston, Vernon. Oh, the reverse would have been pretty, but it didn't go. DeVos, very leading score. Hands it over to Hurley. He, Drew Hill lost it temporarily. Benson's eyeing him. In the corner, Hurley he for three. Off the mark, easy rebound for Benson. Freyer. Off the wing. Bounce pass inside. Vernon turns on Menzies. Little soft floater. And what we heard from uh, Dan Marley doesn't want to see that from Keontae Vernon, and uh, he looks pretty upset. Yeah, Keontae Vernon's primarily job is to play defense, crash the glass, and get his points off the offensive board. And, you know, Menzies a long 7-3, so to be able to challenge that shot, even though you think you have the space to, to get that thing off, he closes that distance quick. I think Seattle, a long distance shot there. Oh, Menzies able to get the rebound. Gittens moving in, picked off. Oscar Freyer on the run, look out. Off the glass and in, Oscar Freyer. Well, Freyer does such a nice job defensively, reading and anticipating passes when they come in his direction. He is an absolute thief at stealing off the ball while it's in the air. Kabas, look out, three-point land. Push off by Gittens on Vernon. He picks up the foul, does Rashad Gittens. Here it is right here, just that little pass to the three-point shooter, Oscar Freire all over that, and that's with the low speed. Good defense that translates to points on the other end. 
Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, thank you guys. I am joined by Matt McClung from the men's golf team. And Matt, you're being honored tonight for Student Athlete Appreciation Night. So take you through a little bit about what you're doing here on campus. What are you studying and plan to do after school? Uh, I'm a sports management major here on, at Grand Canyon. And um, I'm really enjoying it. And uh, I'm sad it has to be over in like a couple months, but I'm enjoying it. Well, you're going out uh, in fine fashion. You just returned from a tournament in Hawaii. The team finished, you finished seventh as a team. How rough was it to go all the way to Hawaii and have to play some golf? Well, there's definitely worse things, and uh, we're just very blessed and fortunate to be able to do that, and uh, I try to enjoy every minute of it. And you kept your focus too, shot 69 in one of your rounds, and you've really been excelling. What are some of your personal goals and goals of the team as you finish this out, knowing that you guys are NCAA tournament eligible? Yeah, we're really excited about that. I think we have a, a good chance to make it to regionals and maybe even nationals. We just have to you know, keep working at it and uh, me and myself working individually. And uh, I think we have a good shot. And uh, take me through your journey. You grew up in Katy, Texas. How did you find your way here to GCU? And what has the experience as a Lope been like for you? Well, I, I started at a small university in Texas called Shriner University. And um, I heard about Grand Canyon through a couple of friends. And I, I don't know, everything just kind of fell into place. But I, I'm glad I moved out here. It's been a great move. Well, I'm uh, glad everything's working out for you. And best luck as you finish off your career here. And enjoy tonight as a part of the Student Athlete Appreciation Celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, very well spoken, but I did check with him as a sports management just to make sure he wasn't here to take my job. He said he does want to go out be on the tour and be a coach, so I think I was safe with that one. <laughs> Another group going to Hawaii. Yeah, everybody gets to go to Hawaii, but us, I'll tell you what, yeah. you go shoot 69 on those tough courses Ooh. over there, you know, they don't play from the white tees like we play from, Barry. They go oh. from the tip back there, so that's a strong number. Oh, that's a long way back. Uh, I, I, I look back there when I'm on the up tee. Takes me a couple, <laughs> of, a couple of shots to get up to the white. Seattle 0 for 4 from the arc tonight. They'll, uh, they'll leave the ball in Keontae Vernon's hands. He's battling, kicks it out. Oh, it went off of Josh Braun, but Vernon is one of five from the field. Braun has not attempted a shot. Frayer's one for one. Benson, 0 oh for one. No offense, but it does play into your opponent's hands when you, in the ball game for the lows, number five, unless you're, you know, down low. Yeah. And he's coming out of the game. Yeah, I, I, Coach Marley was pacing the sidelines there. I mean, he wants his players to be aggressive. There's no doubt about that. But he also realizes that guys got to play a certain role. I knew my role when I was playing in the league. I won't go take shots out of Michael Jordan's hands. That was probably a good call on your part. Stayed in the league 15 years. Got no dummy. Got, got some rings. And then they look, they look at that. It, it, Seattle goes right back inside. Both of their buckets now yep. coming from the paint. Freyer takes it from Benson. Over to Jackson. He's got some room over Menzies. Rebound is up high, Labor pulls it down, leaves it for Jackson, the floater off the glass. How about this? The guy that gets subbed out for the guy who's taking too many shots, comes in and gets two shots on the first possession. First one I didn't like. The second one, you go inside, you attack inside, that's a good shot. Jared Martin at the scoring table. I wonder if he's coming in for Matt Jackson. <laughs> Hill trying to move, cross up over Jackson. Frayer picks his pocket. Frayer's got a little bit of room. Off the glass and in for Oscar Frayer. Ten fours. GCU Hayford already on the floor. Timeout. Seattle. Well, that's good basketball right there. I mean, Oscar Frayer, he's just doing it on that defensive end. Anything that comes in his area, he just thinks it's his. He's just greedy out there. Look at anything that comes around me, I'm taking it. I don't care if it's the pass, the dribble, the lead. Eyeballs the defender. Let's him fly by, then he floats to the basket. Nice job by this young man. Playing hard tonight. Realizes this team needs a strong start to this game and a victory at the end of it. Two steals, four points for Oscar Freyer. A good look at that young man. I got beard in the I tried letting my beard grow out yeah, over this yeah, break. We're on TV. I got nothing but razor stubble and scratchy skin. That's a pretty good looking beard there. You never know. This is the place to be. GC Arena. Who is going? To oh, look at here. Dudley oh. and Booker. The Sons three in the house. Nice. Yes. The three point uh, all star weekend winner, uh, Devin Booker, set a record in the final 
round of that three-point contest. And congratulations to Devin and the Suns. Brought home some hardware, I understand. Colangelo's in the house. Delvin Beecham Jr. from the New York Jets in the house. It's a place to be, people. Prayer takes it from Benson. Prayer almost got it swatted away by Morgan Means. Driving him off the glass. Not there. Prayer's active. Be careful. A little, a little too, too much. Too much. A little too oh, much. He, he had a shot that he thought he was capable of making. It probably does make it, but the length of Menzi bothered him just enough. He wanted another opportunity, and whenever you're going swiping after that ball after it's already been corralled by a defender, very, very few times you get it clean. Most times you end up getting whistled for the foul. Martin came in for Josh Braun. Means. Inside the Menzies. Labor on him. Menzies. Travel. Travel. How about Labor? Uh, hey, 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 yeah, a couple buckets and a nice job that time. Here, this guy's 6'11. He's given up four or five inches out Easy. there to Menzies, and he does a nice job playing big, bodying up, and just forced Menzies to shuffle his, uh, change his pivot foot. Rare. Look out, he got picked by Gittins. Good foul by Matt Jackson right there. You know, Frere probably could have run him down and fouled him too, or maybe tried to get a chance to play at the rim. But Jackson, who's not going to play as many minutes, he steps in here and just takes his foul and says, okay, no damage done. Side out of bounds, just a third team foul. Smart, heady basketball. That's why I always say every personal foul is not actually a mistake. There are situations just as that one where a foul can be a, a good thing to prevent an easy two points. Hill trying to move on Martin. Fade away off the glass. Nice shot by Jordan Hill. They're averaging 13.6 points per game. Now, I don't know if they're going to say that was points in the paint, but certainly a driving action towards the basket. Seattle's finding some luck when they go down low. That's it. Motioning for Freyer to move. Opposite side. Jackson has room for three and hits it. That's what they need. A little pick and a little pop. Matt Jackson finds clear space to knocks down the three-point shot. And Booker like that. Foul underneath. Is that Matt Jackson? Is that going to be the second on Matt Jackson, or did they get labor down there? They did get Matt. Oh, they got Jackson. That's going to be his second. So the first was a good one. This one here, after making a couple, you might want to let him go. But looks like Coach Marley is going to give him another possession out there. Lumberts gets up. Hell. He'll look left, now he goes to Hurley, who came out inside of Menzies. Labor's on him again, up over the top, not there. Good work by Labor, rebound by Prayer. Yeah, Big's doing a good job, challenging the shot without fouling. Quickly inside to Labor, Labor working the opposite end, and he hits it over Menzies. So Labor does a nice job getting low post position quickly. He outran the big fella down the floor, and then when he got the ball, he didn't hesitate to give the big fella a chance to recover. He went quickly into his right shoulder turn and a left-handed hook. Side was again Menzies against Labor. This time Menzies able to kiss it off the glass. Menzies said, "Okay, I saw that move, but I can do it better." He does the same darn <laughs> thing on the other end. Drop step to the baseline, right shoulder turn, left hand hook. Benson kicks back out. Labor wants it for three point land. Oh, it rings out. Halfway down, that ball spun back out. That pick and pop's going to be there. The way Casey Benson likes to dribble that ball from the left side to the right side. They can throw back left over the bigs all night long between Jackson and Labors, and especially um, Blumberg's coming off that line. Getting his own rebound is Hill. And that's one shot that Menzies not going to take. He hasn't attempted a three. Jackson's inside now. Trying to get some room on Menzies. Fade away, not enough. GCU players ready to check in the next dead ball. These guys realizing that they should be all out on the defensive end here. Kavaz drives, takes it in off the glass. 10 of their 12 points, maybe even all 12 of them come right down low against GCU's defense. They were so good in the first half of the season protecting that painted area. The last four games, getting too soft underneath. Martin inside labor, but getting a hand on it was Kavaz. 
Timeout on the floor. The lead is three for GCU early on. 10.28 to go, opening half. It's the first of three on their home court to close out Western Athletic Conference play. Lopes looking to snap a three-game slide. We'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Bethany. I'm a junior here at GCU. Students are making a huge impact on the Valley just through painting the Valley purple. It really means a lot to people in Phoenix to hear that somebody's from GCU. It almost gives you like credentials because they know that you're a good kid and that you're gonna go far. I definitely think GCU is preparing me for my future and teaching students and being a difference maker in the lives of other people. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. It's the most wonderful time of the year, the 2018 WAC Basketball Tournament at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. March 7th through 10th, 14 games, four days of WAC Madness. Be there for the triumph. Get your tickets now at gculopes.com. See you in WAC Vegas. Well, they don't call him the mayor for nothing. That's right, you're looking at a live look inside GCU where the Wolves have a three-point lead over Seattle University with just over 10 minutes to go. But right now we're talking about Josh Braun. He continues to shine in the classroom as well as get his work done on the court. The redshirt senior was voted to the all to the academic all district eight men's basketball team and now advances to the national ballot in which the final team will be decided next month. So what's all this mean? Well, it means the mayor, he's pretty smart. He is made, he graduated here with a 4.0 average, just over a 4.0 if you can imagine that. And now, working on his master's in business administration, Braun boasts a 3.6 GPA. You'll remember he's a two-time All-American and he also earned two-time honor twice straight. How about this, guys? Luckily, Braun better in the classroom than I can talk right now. For two straight years, he was named the WAC preseason player of the year. We've talked about what the mayor can do for this team Right now, still trying to follow, find his shot, but it can be hard when you're struggling sometimes on the court, but he never lets things in his life drop the ball there. He keeps it up in the classroom as well. We wish him luck as his final ballot is decided in the next couple weeks. Amazing. A 4 oh, there's Josh Braun! Kate Longworth bringing a little luck to Josh Braun as he drives that in. It's the hoop and the arm. Yeah, I think Coach Barley yanked his chain with the early substitution, saying you get back in that basketball game, you got to be more aggressive on the offensive end. As soon as he touched it, he put it in deeper drive, took it right to the rack. Now he's got a chance for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Up over the top. Five point Lopes lead. Inbound Morgan Means from Compton, California, their sophomore guard. Over to Jordan Hill. Hill moves right. Kick back over to Gittins. Gittins back to Hill. Hill drives. Stop of the key. Back out Gittins. He'll slash in. Floater. Picked up, rebound to Marin Milstead. Takes it from Jared Martin. Milstead seeing extended minutes at the guard position for the Lopes. Moves right. Back out, Blumbergs didn't expect it. Picked off. Pavas puts it home. Some unforced uh, turnovers here by the Lopes early on and led to some easy opportunities for uh, Seattle U. 14 of their points in the paint. Travel. Scuffling a bit, the Seattle Red Hawks in a bit of a tear here. Coach Marley's turning red over on that sideline. He doesn't like when guys make turnovers where they're trying to do things that aren't really their character. I mean, Mari Milstead driving, over-penetrating, trying to throw the ball back out to the top of the key. Well, the pig's not gonna hold forever out there. You drive the ball that far down the lane, you're not expecting that someone got to throw it back behind his back. Bernard checks in. Draws a foul. The turnovers are mounting, the fouls now are up to six, so Seattle will be shooting the one-on-one. -on -one for the rest of the half. We still got nine minutes and 
17 seconds to go. And sometimes what happens, you hadn't played against live competition outside of some, some scrimmage time in practice. Now all of a sudden, the game's a little faster than what you remember, what you can react to, and you're a half step slow or a fraction of a second uh, quick to uh, slow to respond, and you're you know, reaching with your hands and committing fouls. Hayford puts Menzies back in. Yolanio had been on the court just for a moment. Hill at the line, 82% free throw shooter coming into the game. One point Lopes lead. Means working on Milstead. Milstead drives left. Means oh, takes the pick there by Vernon. That, well called. That was a man sized was, pick by it? Vernon. They, Means hitting so hard and moved Vernon off his feet, but he still got the worst of it. Look at this high pick right here. Man, that just crunch. You just see the net snap back on Means that time, who's up pressuring Damari Milstead the way he should be, but some of the defender there has got to help let that the pick know, let him know that that pick is coming. Hill checks out with two personal fouls. Juan gets a look, doesn't go. Seattle a chance to take their first lead of the game here on this possession. Benson back over the scorer's table. Hurley in for Jordan Hill. He drives, looks inside, pass. Ricochets out on the floor as Kavas, up for Menzies. There's 10 on the shot clock. Do they know it? Means back, look out. Seven, six, five, four. Means gonna have to heave it up there. Off the mark, rebound by Vernon. Great defensive stop that time by the Lopes. I know they didn't get that loose ball on the floor, but they continued playing the full 30 seconds of that possession. Vernon helps free up Milstead. Now he helps with the tip back. That's where you want Keontae Vernon to live if you're Coach Marley and that coaching staff. You set a solid pick, and then you roll to the basket and get on that offensive glass. Well done by that young big man. Four points and four boards for Vernon. Rebound pulled down by Josh Braun. Freyer joins Benson over the scores table. That's what they needed, a couple stops in a row. Now can they get another bucket in a row? Come on. Ooh, he lost it. Tipped away by Gittins. Morgan Means brings it up. Means, ooh, Milstead got a hand on it. And right back into Means, he leaves it there for Gittins. Now he takes it back. Kavas looks inside to Menzies. Menzies looking to turn on Vernon. Got the elbow up. Pushed over the top by Blumberg. Good move by him to Martin. Martin ben, quickly up. Menzies got away with a nasty chicken Did wing he? on that one. That called by the official. Very late. Leaves it for Braun. Milstead finding a little bit of room. Charge. Yeah, he just got outside the restricted area and gave up his body for his teammates. Seven minutes on the clock. The lead is three for GCU. As I mentioned, you don't know who will be in attendance at GCU Arena. Always great to see the likes of these two individuals joining Kate Longworth. Yeah, we got some uh, Sun superstars over here with us with Devin Booker and Jared Dudley. And first, let's uh, talk about this weekend. It was a day off for some people with the NBA All-Star, but not for you. Went out of the three-point competition, set a record Saturday night, draining 20 of your 30 attempts from downtown. What was the experience like for you? Uh, it was unbelievable. You know, it's my third All-Star experience. And, you know, for me, I wanted to bring back, come back with a trophy. You know, my rookie year, I fell short, third place. So, you know, I, I took it seriously. I was very, very uh, competitive, and, and I came out with a big win. And now taking in some college basketball, what's the experience like for you so far watching this game here at GCU? Uh, the first thing I know is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is unbelievable. I've been hearing about the atmosphere, but getting to getting experience it here in person is unbelievable. And from a player standpoint, whether it, you look back at your days at BC or you talk about your days with the Suns, what is it like when you have that six-man effect for you on the court? Oh, a huge advantage for your team. Makes you, your energy level so much better. Uh, I'm finally glad I got to catch one of these games here. 
Dan's been telling us to come out here. He's done a great job. So instead of the ASU games, we're glad to get to come here and support. And of course, you guys being college uh, basketball players yourselves, what are you anticipating with March Madness just around the corner? I know the Lopes are talking about it because this year they're eligible for tournament. Yeah, I know. Uh, BC, I know we're not going to make it. I don't know about Kentucky this year, but you always, uh, you, you, I mean, with our team, we always get the charts. We always fill out the bracket to see who wins, and uh, you never know who's going to be it this year. From a college standpoint, I know you got to see GCU program as a player up close. Now you're seeing it in the stands. What can this experience do for these players, whether they go on to play or just kind of draw the experience of being a collegiate athlete? You know, it's something that you're going to remember for a lifetime. You know, I always say, I said my second year in the NBA, you know, I, I love the NBA, but college is an experience like, like you'll never forget. So I only did one year. Some of the lot of these kids are doing four years, so I hope they enjoy the experience. And like I said, build memories that last forever. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us. Enjoy the game. Thank you. And everybody, I know, someone tried to steal my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jared Dudley, you got to watch him, Kate. He's oh, yeah. always trying to get in front of the camera and grabbing a microphone. Ah. You get to go uh, Tell Duds I said what's up. Booker was with Kentucky when the Lopes paid a visit to Lexington. Yeah, he, he's, a good, he's a good player, a good young player. Jared Dudley, a strong veteran. He's a 40% career three-point shooter. Hate to say it, you know, the Lopes shut him down that day. <laughs> He went, you know, somehow he was able to bounce back from that personal drought that he had against the Lopes that day. And the rest well, of the team did quite well oh, against the Lopes that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they put a 40-point burger on him. Hey, hey, and I think that the, wasn't that like the second or third game of Booker's collegiate career? I know it was really early in the season, so cut the kid a little slack. My goodness. Yeah, he, he, he thought Let's he should have been an all-star this year. A lot of people in the Valley story. thought he should have been an all-star this year. No doubt. Labor. Oh, man, he can't get that long distance shot to drop. I'm going down to the Suns game uh, next Friday. They're having a decade of the 2000s honoring me and some ah. of my teammates, Maurice Stoudemire and hey. Sean Marion. Should be fun night. Sean Marion. That is awesome. Yeah, you remember the Matrix? Oh, yeah. He is great. He, 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 he'll get his name retired up in the Suns Ring of Honor up there with Jerry Colangelo and Dan Marley. Waver, he just can't hit it. Looks like Means gets called for the personal foul. Seattle U in a drought 0 for the last five from the field. The last three and a half minutes. The Lopes haven't hit a bucket in 217. Yeah, low scoring affair than I am. Both teams doing a good job defensively. Are either that or they shot themselves out in the, in the pregame warm-ups. Lopes plus six in the rebounding margin. Labor trying to move on to Boss. Freyer tried to come in, just couldn't grab it. Yeah, you know, Labor's likes that move to the bucket where he kind of gets it going one way and then stops and kind of goofy foots jump shot back off the opposite leg and he's had some success with that but right now I mean, it, it just seems like everything you need to, you're going to get are going to be points in the paint. Both teams with 14 points in the paint. Inside Menzies from Means. Three second call. Wow. Big fella camped out down there oh, underneath. He's got those size 21 shoes so probably just didn't realize where the heck his toes were. Look at he gets that low post position, that left foot down there straddling that line, 1,002, 1,003. He's still camped out down there. Referee blows the whistle. Man, you could put a motor on the boat, back of those shoes, and go fishing. <laughs> Man, big feet. Benson to Freyer. Freyer beyond the arc inside, Labor. He's got the advantage on Kavas. Left hand not there, Vernon tried to put it back. Saved it way back out. Freyer's there, though. How about the work by Vernon there? You, you kind of mistimed his jump, so he didn't get the foot back. But he sticks with it, grabs the offensive rebound a second time. He's got six points. Inside now to Vernon. Vernon cuts into the paint. Oh, look at that, Keontae Vernon. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. That's what that hard work does for you. The more the go, the more you're going, the more you get. And that time it pays off when he gets that low post position and uses the rim as a protector and gets the bucket. Over the top. Scott Yolanio steps back in for Menzies. 
Look at that one more time. Fake like he was going to go baseline and came back to the middle. Crossed up the big fella. 38%, three point field goal percentage for Seattle. So far, 0 for 8 in the game. Ooh. Hill is in trouble. That's his third. Yeah, and that's a silly foul. That's going to send Lopes to the line. Hayford going to have to bring him back out. They don't play a lot of guys. About seven. Gittins comes back in. Well, it was the first game with a big fella. Menzies, he picked up five fouls in only 12 minutes of action. Didn't get a field goal in the basketball game, so the Lopes do want to attack inside. Even though they got some length down there, you can still go down there selectively and get some success. I mean, he got 16 points in the paint. So you say, well, these guys, kids block it over two and a half shots a game. Well, you can still go down there if you get them going the wrong direction and attack the basket. 74% free throw shooter coming into the game for Alessandro Labor, and he connects on both. Yeah, that, he, he's, he's a nice, for a big guy as uh, early as he is in his collegiate career, he knocks down a high percentage out there on that free throw line. That's just like a, you know, giving a couple uh, points to the looks. Means. Oh, Keontae Vernon! Not in my house! He swatted that all the way out to the concession stand. They're still trying to get that basketball back on the court, I believe. A couple of Havocs are throwing the ball back, please. Yeah, they're, they're a couple of Havocs fainted. He swatted that ball so hard. Look at this, comes from that weak side position. It says, you shall not pass. Burley, Vernon got a hand on that, but yeah. DeVos picked it up. They were Seven trying the alley-oop. Yeah, they were. Foul on Gittins, Frere, some good deep. The job Frere right now was doing on the defensive end is just absolutely amazing. In just under 16 minutes of work, he's responsible for a couple steals. And then that possession right there, he just was so quickly sliding his feet, caused the guy to turn the basketball over. Labor inside the Vernon bot. Yolanio got a hand on it. That pass wasn't there by the time Labor saw it. It was open initially, but Labor was too slow to put the delivery. Yolanio from Rome, Italy. Labor's out there from Balzano. Tip on that one. Benson brings it up. Freyer open for three. Bam! Well, I'll tell you what. Freyer got two steals and led to basically two layups. He blocks the shot at this end and spots up in the deep corner and knocks down the three. Oh, run for the Lopes. We travel the, the break with 3.27 to go. There's been some thefts occurring here at GCU. I'm Bianca. I'm a sophomore here at GCU, and I'm studying mechanical engineering. Arizona is completely different from Italy, but that's why I love it so much. I feel honored to be here at GCU. I feel like they truly care about who I am. If you're passionate and if you work hard, you can do it. And GCU is here to support you. I will be able to apply my knowledge and make a difference immediately. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Welcome back. You're watching a whack matchup between Seattle University and, of course, the GCU Lopes. Both teams pretty hot at home right now. The Lopes with the lead 10 points over Seattle University with just three minutes to go in the first half. Meanwhile, this is the leader of the WAC right now, New Mexico State. They suffered a couple losses the last couple weeks. However, the Aggies still holding on to that top spot with a conference record of 9-2. and two. Utah Valley behind them with an 8-3 record. And as you see, also in that two spot, Seattle University, 8-3 in the conference. But the, hardest, uh, the hottest team right now, Kansas City. The Roos have won three straight, and right now, 
with a commanding lead over UTRGV at the half up at UTRGV and Chicago State rounding out for the top eight. Why do these numbers matter? Well, because guys, in just a couple weeks, we're gonna be talking about the WAC tournament in Vegas and how you finish in regular conference play is how you'll be seated for the tournament. So great to be talking about postseason tournament play. There's a three-pointer, their first on the night for Kavas, one of 10. Yeah, that's a nice play right there. A good reversal of the basketball. And Oscar Frere, as quick as he is and as long as he is, could not get out there and challenge that shot effectively. Braun wants three. He gets it! Yeah, that's a good job by Casey Benson. And now you give Coach Marley a half of an assist on that one because he drew that one up to get Braun coming up off a down screen right to the middle of the floor where he can get a good, clean look at the basket. Means trying to move on Benson. Twisting, turning, floater up high, drops. Two and a half to go, opening half. Eight point Lopes lead. Freyer takes it from Benson. Braun. Over to Freyer. Freyer pulls down. Now he wants some more from three point land. Not there. Rebound. Labor's there. Puts it down. Uh, nice job. Get off the seven foot three Menzies on the floor right now. And Labor's able to battle underneath for that offensive rebound and put back. Great moves there by Josh Hurley. He doesn't go. Yeah, Hurley he was a black conference player of the week earlier in the, in the year. He, he's got some smooth moves out there on the floor. Very aggressive play. Comes in for Keontae Vernon, Fifi Adu quickly scrambles over to the scorer's table. For Freya. Hayford rings over. What remains of his team with Yolanio at the line. 66% free throw shooter. Earlier, he's from Rome, Italy. Of course, Labor from Bolzano, Italy. Oh, the lefty had it. He's a little shocking. That ball is three quarters of the way into the basket and popped back out of it. Benson moves to his right. Braun comes out. He looks inside. Nobody home. Adu, he takes it back. Braun driving in the wing. Fifi Adu, he wants three. That's off the mark, but Labor up over the top of Kabas. Labor muscles his way, draws the foul. That's just Labor on the last couple of possessions just saying, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, and I'm hungrier. Chewing glass underneath. Couple offensive rebounds and a putback, and this one earns him a trip to the foul line where he already knocked down a couple earlier in the game. Look at him just do his position earlier. This gets right down underneath there, moves the little guy with the little right shoulder. Get out of my way, punk. I'm going through the basket. I don't know if he said punk. But yeah. Yeah. Definitely punk with that shoulder. Four offensive rebounds for Labor. Two personal fouls on Means. Gittins has two. Hill on the bench with three. Milanio takes a seat. A little spill down there by the mm -hmm. Seattle bench. They're taking some time to get it cleaned up. I think somebody dropped a cup of water on the floor. Oh. There was a game last night that got suspended because of the uh, surface was unplayable. I think Providence was, what the heck were they playing? They, they, yeah, Providence and Seton Hall were going at it. And, Players kept going down and bad, nasty spills. They were afraid that so sometimes uh, of the court they, over the ice. It might have been, yeah, it might have been a little break. precipitation coming back, coming up through the ice. But uh, it was bad. I saw some kids go down there in very hard falls. They suspended the game and, and quit play. There gets a little help. Oh, he brings it up. Nine here. Get this open look three. Good. Now that can't happen. That, that's just too easy right there. <laughs> Basically the same play they freed that GCU freed Josh Braun with. 
You know, that was that little mopping up the floor was like a timeout, and they drew something up over there in that far corner. That's an easy knockdown. Labor for three! Okay, well, maybe the Lopes had time to draw something up themselves, and back-to-back three-point buckets keeps it a double-digit lead. Hurtley here. Looking to move on Martin. Back out, Gittins. Loses it temporarily, driving. Swarmed by Martin and the travel. I thought he might have got away with it, and then the officials realized, yeah, I think that was a travel. I'm going to go ahead and make this P move inside this black whistle, and they whistled him for the travel. Lopes have a chance to go for a two for one, should they want one here. 43, Fifi from the corner. Too heavy, nobody home except. Menzies with a rebound, 36 and counting. And it was a good quick shot, though. So you see about a 10-second differential between shot clock and game clock, so Lope should get another attempt. Go on. See where he is. He Take a look at this one more time. And drive down to the middle of the paint there. Braun comes over. He's definitely outside the restricted area, but I think the official said that the offensive player, nice. Far away from the inside, that John Josh Braun was not able to draw that charge squarely in the chest. And anytime an offensive player gets outside the numbers of the, of the defensive player, it's going to be a whistle every time. Early, he 82 percent from the free throw line. Great up to Lane in Vermont, the LA native, before coming to Seattle. Grad transfer, timeout on the floor. Well, it's all coming up, folks. The WAC basketball tournament, March 7th through the 10th, Las Vegas, Nevada, the Orleans Arena. All session tickets can be purchased through the GCU ticket office and the Orleans Arena box office. The GCU ticket office, that number is 602-639-8979. Single session tickets available to purchase on March 7th at the Orleans box office. Women's quarterfinals are on Wednesday, March 7th. The men's quarterfinals are on Thursday, March 8th. A lot of Lopes fans on their way to Las Vegas, Nevada, the Orleans Arena for postseason tournament play. Couldn't come soon enough. It's I'm been excited. A long four years. Yeah, four year wait finally over. Lopes in the postseason is going to be fantastic. An opportunity to earn themselves a trip to the big dance. Mini champion North Carolina what? awaits. Oh, yeah, that's good. Cool. Carolina's on a roll right now. I, oh, did I mention go. they've won six straight basketball no, games? No, no, yeah, I didn't mention that. Oh. Hottest team in the country right now. I saw Duke did a number on uh, Louisville, didn't they? Yeah, but that, I think Carolina beat Duke during that six oh, game winning oh, streak. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. That's the one, yeah. Waver, six on the shot clock, got to do something. Turning, right hand, not there. Loose ball one, they better get it off. They do, Martin. Oh, it doesn't go. 35-26, the halftime score. Great job defensively by the Lopes, keeping the Seattle University under 30 points. Remember, this is a team that's been averaging 83 in their last three-game winning streak. Did a nice job defending the arc as well, and they went inside for a number of points. 35-26, let's send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, Coach, well, let's start with the good. You always are preaching you want them attacking the boards and playing strong defense. Right now, keeping Seattle U 2 of 11 from three-point range and attacking the boards, 23-11, out-rebounding them. What have you seen from the team in those two areas? Well, we got a little more fight. I mean, when we rebound the ball, we have a chance to win. When we don't, we don't play well. So, you know, I thought we did a better job of that. We still got to do a better job of executing offensively. Sometimes too quick, you know, they get out there and they go too quick. Just got to settle down and, and execute. What is the message to the team when their brains perhaps are going a little faster, perhaps feeding off the energy here? What's your message at halftime to do uh, that? You know, they shouldn't be now. This is, we're into the season. We're six and five in the whack. All that crap's over. It's time to start playing and take advantage of this great crowd. If, if this crowd is bothering them, then they got a problem. I think they're excited for yeah. you. You're right. Thank you. Thank you very much. The team perhaps very excited to be back at home, feeling the energy here. And as Dan Marley said, now they just got to slow the game down and do what they are capable of doing, guys. We're down a nine-point halftime lead for GCU. Crowd liking that first half. They're going to love this halftime show. The All-Star Stunt Dogs. Who doesn't love the All-Star Stunt Dogs? 
Love in that first half. Lopes on top, 35-26. Kate will be back with more. DC Arena, after we take this time out. I decided to go to college to further my education and to find my purpose in the world and be a part of something much bigger than myself. I wanted to set up the best possible future for myself, both academically and athletically. I try to learn from everyone, whether that be professors, my teammates, or other student athletes. I try to see everyone as an opportunity to learn. Everyone has a story to tell, and I think there's a moral and something you can learn from it. I'm Dominique. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. I've gone through things I can't necessarily be taught, and so that paired with everything that GCU is doing for me, I feel like, you know, is setting me up for success. To have someone say, like, I want you, that's like a lot for someone like me. They're changing people's lives. By changing my life, now you change my little brothers and sisters because they saw that I went to college. It'll just be, you know, my greatest accomplishment, not just because it's a diploma, but because, you know, I did what no one really thought I could do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. We've got ourselves a dog fight here at GCU Arena. The Lopes with a nine point lead at the break. And here entertaining the Havocs at the halftime are the all-star stunt dogs. And uh, no stunts, it's all talent that is carrying the Lopes through right now. 35-26 over Seattle University. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Lopes Halftime Show on Cox Channel 4, Your View. And I'm joined now by Liz Conwell, a alumni relations manager. Take me through exactly what your role entails. Yeah, so I help to connect the alumni with the university, whether they're traditional or non-traditional. And I help to make sure that they still love GCU and feel all that low pride. And there's a lot of events for them to still be involved with. Take me through what Lopes on the Road is all about. I know you guys have had a couple events following the men's basketball team at Chicago State, at New Mexico State, and I know hearing from Dan Marley and the team, yeah. that has a great effect on their game. Um, so we started Lopes on the Road a couple years ago as a way to connect our fans outside of Phoenix with the Lopes community. Um, we've done soccer games, basketball, women and men's, um, and then we're starting with baseball games soon. And we know it affects the athletes. They appreciate those folks in the stands, especially when you're on the road, getting that advantage on somebody else's home court or home field. But how does it benefit the university? I think it benefits the university because it helps build that pride nationwide. So people feel um, excited to go watch the Lopes in other cities. And uh, I think the athletes feel like they have uh, fans in other cities and it helps them with their performance. Yeah, always great to stay connected with your university because it means so much to your education and your future. So when is the next Lopes on the Road scheduled? The next Lopes on the Road is Saturday uh, in San Diego at the University of San Diego and we're doing a men's baseball game at 6 p.m. And as alumni relations manager, I'm sure you have polls. So I'm just putting this out there. Our broadcast team, we want to do a Lopes on the Road in Hawaii, if you oh, can arrange that for I'll us. let you know. I'll let All you right. know. Keep me posted on that. In the meantime, let's talk a little bit about homecoming. It's right around the corner. What's in store for GC? So uh, homecoming starts next Friday. Uh, it's a kickoff at the golf course, and then it continues on Saturday with a service project in the morning. Um, and then we have a huge tailgate Saturday night, and then we finish the season here. Um, we hope to have tons of alumni come out. Where can you get more information on homecoming? www.gcu.edu backslash homecoming. And just so you know, Scott Williams, he's calling the games, but he is not an alumni. Once you said that this tournament, everything starts for homecoming week at the golf course, I have a feeling he's going to try and finagle his way. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, as you heard, you can get all your information on homecoming, and Liz will be joining uh, fans in the stands next week along with the alumni. So we wish you guys a great time as GCU ends it's regular season that's been quite the dog fight here at GC Arena next Saturday night. But first, we're still talking about this game against the Red Hawks. When we come back, Scott and Barry join us with highlights and stats and much, much more from the first half. All-star stunt dogs performing now at halftime and more Lopes basketball coming your way right after this.
Grand Canyon University Championship Golf Course features over 7,200 yards of tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, and a 22,000 square foot clubhouse. The Lope House Restaurant, serving modern American cuisine, is open to the public seven days a week. Come experience the best golf and dining destination in the heart of Phoenix. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. My name is Anthony Perez and I earned my master's in education at Grand Canyon University. I feel that the degree program at GCU definitely got me ready and prepared to reach both short and long-term goals. It's definitely prepared me to lead my classroom and also be a teacher leader to find innovative ways of solving the problems in education in the state of Arizona. I'm definitely committed to student success and so I'm very passionate about working with students. What I absolutely love is when they get that spark in their eye and they understand a concept, when I have those moments, is making it all worthwhile in everything that I'm doing. Grand Canyon University definitely has a vibrant campus that has many resources that are accessible. I feel that GCU has prepared me to be an agent of change so that way I can support and advocate on behalf of children in the state of Arizona. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Beautiful night in Phoenix, Arizona. 35-26, GCU on top of Seattle. First to three on their home court. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth here from GCU Arena. So glad you could join us here for GCU basketball in this first of three before conference play gets started. And the first half, they're trying to put an end to a three-game slide of the Lopes. They're looking pretty sharp. Doing a good job defensively. Coach Marley was uh, impressed with the defensive effort. He probably wanted them to take care of the basketball a little bit. Some unforced errors going on. But I like the way they attacked inside. 18 of their 35 points coming in that paint. Let's take a look at our first half highlights. We begin with Alessandro Labor, his first of 12 points in the game. Yeah, he was fantastic early on. I love this one right here. Just kind of just create some space using that big body of his. And I love this one right here. Frere was a thief in that first half. He had a couple steals that led to some early transition baskets. And then I love this one here. It's big Menzies working out inside uh, uh, seven foot three inches of fun underneath, getting it done. And then I love Matty Jackson, five coming off that bench for five points. He had all five of the bench points in that first half. And then I, and Hill attacking underneath and he gets his offensive rebound and put back, he gets it going underneath. And the JB, finally after a timeout, some time on the bench, comes back in to grab some a trip to the three point, uh, to the free throw line. And then Cavas, who's doing a fantastic job in the country from behind the arc, he gets one in transition there and throws it home. <laughs> and then I like this one by Vernon because he had taken some shots earlier, didn't land him some time on the pine, and then he decided to attack the big fella's feet. And then there was a three-point barrage down the stretch. It was Cobbins for three. He gets a clean look. JB gets a nice one here off a double screen down. He knocks down the three. Two of his three made field goals. And then Lavers from behind the bench, capping off the score behind the arc. 35-26 the score. 40% field goal percentage for the Loves. 4 of 13 from beyond the arc. Just 2 of 11 for the Red Hawks. Rebounding margin in favor of the Loves. Assists, points in the paint just by two. Fast break points, though, 7-2 to two in favor of the Lopes. Jordan Hill, three fouls. Got to be careful. Does Hayford, Gittins, and also uh, Means have two personal fouls as well. They don't go too deep. No, they don't go too deep, but they also got to watch Kavis out there. He just kind of only got one three-point shot. He normally knocks down two or three a game. He might try to catch fire from behind the arc. Menzies going to come back in there, try to be a big presence. Lopes, meanwhile, they have to do the same thing that they did in the first half. Attack inside. The three-point shots open off a pick and pops, that's fine. But keep driving that ball to the basket. Good things will kind of happen. And when he brought Braun out after kind of scuffling a little bit, when he came back in, you mentioned he got a little bit more physical and seemed to be responsive. More aggressive. Yeah. And I, I think that's what he wants from his, his uh, seniors. Casey Benson, Josh Braun, and Keontae Vernon. Doesn't want Vernon taking 16 mid-range jump shots. He wants them attacking that glass, living on the offensive glass, getting those putbacks, uh, setting picks, rolling to the bucket. All right, KB back with more as Lopes take to the floor. We're moments away from the second half. So leave it right here on your view.
Founded on the belief that the entrepreneurial dream is an engine that drives innovation forward in a global marketplace, the Colangelo College of Business educates and develops values-driven business leaders. Our graduates exemplify the principles of servant leadership and entrepreneurship. GCU's strong Christian identity informs the education you receive, integrating our Christian values with the business curriculum. The college features more than 25 programs from the bachelor through the master's level, catering to traditional, evening, and online students. These programs serve a diverse set of aspiring business professionals who not only learn in the classroom, but gain real-world experience operating actual businesses. Our students also receive unique access to Jerry Colangelo's legendary experience, leadership, and connections throughout the business world. Find out more at gcu.edu slash business. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Welcome back. It's a nine-point game here at GCU Arena. The looks on top, 35-26 over the Red Hawks of Seattle University and leading the way for the Red Hawks. But it's looking good with just seven points as the Lopes uh, keeping the Red Hawks 0 for 9 for a point from downtown, but they were 2-11 on three-point shooting. Monte, of course, leads the, or is eighth in the country when it comes to three-point shooting. So with just seven points to his name, pretty good defense by the Lopes. Jordan Hill with six points. And uh, although he was in foul trouble, he only played 13 minutes. Meanwhile, on the low side, Labor leading the way for all scores with 12 points to his name. And Oscar still on that offensive tear, seven points for him. Keontae Vernon with six. As the Lopes are getting ready to get underway for second half action, had a chance to talk with Dan Marley at the half. He said, yeah, team playing some strong defense. And when they got it together, the strong skills are showing up on the court. But they still struggling a bit, especially on the offensive side. He wants to see more from his team. Their mind's going a little bit faster than their feet and their motions able to carry out. So we'll look to see how that changes in the second half, guys. Thank you, Kay. Down five low players scoring in that opening half. They like to see a little bit more from their bench. But how about Oscar Freyer in the game? Seven points, Scott. Well, I, I liked his activity on the defensive end. And then I think when he gets himself going defensively with the steals and the block shots and then getting on the glass, running in transition, that one right there, that corner three was after he tipped the ball on a block shot and then just sprinted the floor. I, the kid's playing really aggressive right now. He talked about his numbers, 15 a game on that three-game trip, and he's right on pace to do that again, but it's the strong defense that he's doing. I mean, he's one of the reasons why they're, their offense is sputtering right now at 34% from the field is because Oscar Freire has been a one-man wrecking ball. Fans, be sure to participate and attend the 8th Annual Run to Fight Children's Cancer here at Grand Canyon University coming up on March 10th. It starts at 7 a.m. All proceeds are donated directly to the Phoenix Children's Hospital and the Children's Cancer Network. There will be a 10K, a 5K, and a Cancer Survivors Run Walk. For more information, log on to runtofightcancer.com. Always a fantastic event here at GCU. We encourage you to come on out and participate. Lopes fans back up on their feet. As they await the Lopes' first bucket, we are underway in front of our broadcast location. Hurley takes it back from Jordan Hill inside. Menzies looking for that first bucket, but stoned by Laver. Oh, Menzies making wow. a play in a crowd. He just was not able to elevate. That's one the 7-3 uh, Giant generally loves the dunk, but Lopes put a double team on him down there. He wasn't able to get off the ground. Looking for that momentum. Braun, rebound. Vernon, be careful. Gittins pulls it down. I like to see Braun come out firing on the Lowe's first possession. Remember how long it took him to get going in that first half? He's wasted no time here in the second half. Long distance lookout. You don't want to see that guy heated up from the arc. 48% coming in for Matei 
Cavas. Yeah, he, he's absolutely uh, lights out from behind that arc. He can flat out get it done. Burnett. Back to Freya. 11 on the shot clock. Back out. Benson slashes in. Bounce pass to Vernon. Left hand. Doesn't go. Tap back by Labor. Doesn't go. Foul called. Believe they got Menzies. Well, I don't know who the big man's coach is on that bench over there, but he did a really good job letting his bigs know tonight that they need to crash that glass and attack inside because they are putting in some work underneath. Benson. Short. Rebound. Menzies. Benson looking for his first points. Hurley to his right. Gittins. Hide by Braun. Near side. Looks inside. Comes back out. Jordan Hill playing with three personal fouls. Kavas. Hide by Freyer. Labor comes out. Menzies. Hurley off the mark. Loose ball. Well, disappointing that Casey Benson couldn't grab that ball before it bounced on the out-of-bounds line because it was Keontae. Ver oh, wait, they changed the call. Now they're going to give the ball over to Seattle when I thought it was the Seattle player that it went off on and that Benson just didn't pick it up in time. But let's take a look at it one, one more time. It ping-pongs off a couple players, but I thought it, was, it went off a Seattle player last. So it went yep. right off the heels of uh, who was that? That looked like it was Hill. Giddens, or was it Hill? And then it bounced out of bounds. So you can see it right between the five hole of Giddens, but it hits the inside of his calf, and then it goes out of bounds. Does he grab it right here, though? Hey, court, it went out of bounds before yeah. Benson could get to it, so it's got to be Lopes' ball going the other way. Had Benson got it before that short hop, it was an easy two points in transition for the Lopes. They got three seconds on the shot clock. I don't mind when they go to the replay to get it right, something quick like that. But, uh, you know, when they go over there and they want to see four to five, well, hold on, they didn't get it right? Did he touch it right here? Did he touch it right there? Looked like he, oh, okay. Everything's right in the world. <laughs> Traveling was the call. Well, that's what I always say about the game of basketball. You play long enough, these things generally even, but it went off his heel and his foot. Right here and Benson. Then the official. Oh, they're saying Benson's foot's on the line. They're saying Benson got the ball before I stand correct. I apologize to the official. Benson's right foot was out of bounds when he picked up the ball. Vernon, back out, Laver. Freyer. Freyer from the arc. In and out, rebound kicked out to Jordan Hill. Those fans wanting to sit down. Hill, back out. Gittins quickly into the corner. Kavas. Reaching. Well, Reaching. Number four, Oscar Freer wanted to get in there and get himself another steal. He reached in there, picked up his third foul. Better be careful. I wonder if he jammed his finger there. He looks like he's grimacing a bit. They try to pull that thing out. He sometimes you, you stick your finger in there, and one catches a part of the player's wrist. Ends up a quarter of an inch shorter than it was before you reached in. Ten on the shot clock. Hurley he to his right. Cuts back out in the corner. Gittins for three. Ooh, my. Okay, well, that 10 point lead evaporated real quickly here. We had a one possession game with two and a half minutes to go. Lopes haven't been able to score. It's a 6 0 run. Fans want to take a seat here in the second half. Braun in the corner in front of Miley. Vernon. That doesn't go. Rebound by Hill. Three-point lead by the Lopes. Perlehe. Moving on Vernon. Oh my, Vernon. Now there's some contact there, but I hope, hope the officials don't pitch and hold themselves in the, in the contact there. That's a pretty good job of Keontae Vernon sliding his feet. I, I, you know, he, he got big. Young men out there, it, you gotta let them play through some of that contact when they're out there on the floor. Oh, I just didn't see it in the opening half, that's all, just consistency. Hill, crowd doesn't seem to hear that highly for Jordan Hunt. There you go. 
Vernon takes the charge from Curly. Uh, you know, this is, I thought this was about the same job that Vernon did prior. Oh. Maybe a little contact, maybe that oh, off arm came out a little bit, but I, that's what you don't want to see. It was a great first half with the officials, even though both teams ended up going to the one and one early on. Those were fouls that were actually fouls. Some of these just slide your feet stuff. I, mean, I let the kids play. 10 8 Seattle University has a margin in turnovers. Braun pulls it down, goes around Hurley. He just brought the hoop in the harm. Hurley he holding that right foot. I don't know if he got stepped on or he twisted it, but he's getting up real gingerly. And I love this one by Braun, because that's a seven foot three giant inside that he just attacks underneath. I think he caught the heel of uh, Menzies and landed awkwardly, kind of twisted and tweaked that ankle. Yeah, he, he's walking about as limping about as bad as I've ever seen anybody limp off this GCU floor this game. I don't know if he's going to try to get some more tape on it, if they're going to try to ice it, cool it down, throw so that cold spray, but he's having a tough time putting some weight on it over there in the corner. Three-point play by Josh Braun. It opens it back up to six. The fans are able to take a seat. Hill moves to his right. Back over Gittins. Long three. And he look out for Mr. Gittins. They wanted to switch. I think Josh Braun thought that they were going to switch that. Braun for three. Rings out. Man. Jordan Hill picks up that. His fourth personal foul. He can't believe it. He's going to have to go spend a lot of time on that pine. And it's just a three-possession game. I don't think they can ride him out here much longer. He can't, can't get his fifth this early in the second half. But nice job by Oscar Frere, Keontae Vernon, and Lavers doing a job on the offensive glass. Vernon's pass picked off by Gittins, who is looking sharp here early on. Frere, ooh, Landed awkwardly on Keontae Vernon. Really, you got nine guys got to run. Oh, excuse me, five guys got to run. Four guys running down in black shirts to try to pick this guy you up off that. the floor. That drives me nuts. But I, I understand it's great play defensively, getting that pass length. Another good job defensively, not giving up the easy bucket. And I don't think most of those Seattle players sprinted that hard all night as hard as they did to sprint down to try to pick him up off the floor. Let's send it over to Kate. All right, guys, I am here with Molly Turner from the Beach Volleyball team, and we talked about her Michael Jordan-esque story in our pregame show, just how she battled odds. So let's just start with that. You were cut from your high school team, and then you went on, you did have two national titles to your name, but you still didn't receive any offers for college scholarship, but now here you are, a star at, on the sand at GCU. Take me through your journey to arriving to be a student athlete here. It's been really tough, but honestly, I, I can't be more grateful at where I am right now. Uh, the team that I have is more than what I could ask for, and everything that it's taken to get here, it's completely worth it. You truly went up against the odds, and some people were saying you can't do things, you can't do it. You did not listen to that. How did that prepare you in life, and what lesson did you learn that others watching from home right now can apply in their life? I think when people told me no, it made me want to try harder. Um, there were times where I didn't want to try, but I pushed through it, and my family and my mom were really big supporters and kept telling me to keep pushing, and it's all going to work out. So I think that having my family there and my friends and coaches, it was a really big part of why I am who I am and why I kept trying to uh, push and get there. And it's paying off tonight is Student Athlete Appreciation Night. You are being honored. What is your major and what are your plans for the future? My major is psychology and my plan after college is to move to California and play pro beach volleyball. What do you get in your opponent's mind and help you with your game? Meanwhile, the season starts tomorrow. Doubleheader here on campus against Cal Poly and LSU. Some big matches also Saturday against Pepperdine and USC. What are you anticipating for the season ahead? Uh, we have really huge goals and we really think that we're, we can get to the NCAA championships and uh, make a really big uh, splash in them. Honestly, we are uh, hoping to, for my partner and I, we really want to be all Americans and I think that as a team, that's really going to help us get to uh, where we want to go this season, the NCAA championships. Um, 
definitely our biggest goal, and I think we're more than capable of getting there. Well, we wish you the best of luck, guys. Thank you, Kate Longworth, Molly Turner. Best of luck this weekend as beach volleyball gets underway here on the campus of Grand Canyon University. Nice new facility as Gittins connects. He's certainly been the story. He's got 12 points now, 13. 11-3 out of the out of this, uh, locker room here in the second half, and now they're going to get Matt Jackson for an offensive foul. Set a legal screen. Marley is all right. Now Marley, Coach Marley, he understands. He needs this win. We've seen his team create some. Turnovers that they just have not done in the first half of the season, especially here at home against GCU. I mean, at, at GCU. Morgan Means got it back defensively. Got it back. Yeah, slide the feet. Casey Benson takes the charge that possession. I believe it was uh, Keontae Vernon. A couple possessions prior to that, getting sliding their feet down there. You realize that guy wants to slide down there, try to gain an advantage on the baseline, and it's your job to get down there and cut them off. Go on. Labor reaching. Got the bucket, hooping the harm. Oh, nice job by Labor. Seattle's been able to cut into that deficit. It's been Josh Braun with an old fashioned three point play. Now Labor with a chance at the old fashioned three point lay play. They really went on the road before Labor's was out on a tear. He was averaging about 25 points a game. And that's just the form that we're seeing out of Labors tonight. It kind of went away from him there in that three-game road trip, the most recent one. But boy, has he brought his A game to the, the yard tonight. 41-37, Lopes on top. Seattle has never led. Rashad Gittins. The boss from the arc. In and out for Kavas. Braun tried to grab it. Out. Kavas couldn't keep it in. Yeah, it, 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 it takes a village to keep Menzies off that offensive blast. And there's been no low stint and corral it cleanly. They kept that big fellow who's one of the best offensive rebounders in the country from keeping it himself. Bounce pass. Labor. Over to Jackson. Open look. Three. Too heavy. Loose ball. Pulled down by Menzies. Morgan Means moves to his left. Yolanio looked left, back out to Means. Means back out front, now to his left. Gittins looking for three again, flat on that. Labor ball. Yeah, he push it back, eh? Is the 22nd offensive rebounder in the nation. And if you don't do your work on him early, you get stuck underneath like that. He gets the inside position, and Labor's got a, crash, a scratch and claw underneath, and he's got a little too much body. Gittin's yeah, got to get on him. Yolano quickly into Menzies. Menzies trying to turn the left hand, and it drops. He likes that right shoulder turn, the left hand hook. Puts it up in that big paw, throws that chicken wing out there, creates some space, and it's lights out for the defender. Two-point Lopes lead, open for Labor from three-point land. He's doing his darn thing tonight, six of 13 from the field. He's knocked out a couple triples. He's got 18 points to go along with 17 Rodmans. He loves to pick and pop. He just likes popping out to that left wing position. 18 for Labor. I think they're going to get number 42 there, the kid from down under. He tries to draw that charge when the player's coming right to the middle of the floor. It's a little too much, but I like the aggressive play. Look at that Menzies on there. Just gets that low post position. There's already lights out. Then he hits him with that right bow, knocks him back a foot and a half, and then goes right into that left-hand jump hook. Means 13 on the shot clock. Kavas comes out. Means over to Kavas. Loses the handle, loose ball. Oh. Means able to pick it up. Four on the shot clock. Kavas trying to turn, loses it. Down on the floor. Possession arrow for the Lopes. Kavas needs some stick. 
That, you know, I wonder. You, you got to go down out the floor, but with one second on the shot clock, the Lopes almost could have kept that possession arrow and just let the shot clock expire. But nobody's quick enough to think that way. You see that ball on the floor, you're tied. Get on the ground and go get it. And that's what the Lopes did. Great job defensively by GCU. And how many times did Kavas lose the ball? We got to get him some of that old Lester Hayes stick. Oh, yeah, Lester Hayes. Remember that? He used to soak Raiders. his arms, his forearms, yeah, and everything. All over him. Great oh. defender. It doesn't go for Braun. Menzies pulls it down. Jordan Hill's at the scorer's table, coming in with four personal fouls. Lester Hayes lead the league in interceptions a couple of years. Looks like Velcro. Menzies, left hand and in. Uh, big fella starting to heat up. Hey, I talked to him before the game a little bit. Uh, he likes to call him, they say they call him Big A or Big Sexy, and he's Big, big sexy, sexy right now. Yeah. He's working out underneath. He's got eight points to go along with nine rebounds. And he said that. Yeah, he, he, he they said call that. me Big Sexy. He like, yeah, I think he likes Big Sexy more than Big A. Well, yeah, well, right, wouldn't he? Brenson, Jackson. Oh, it doesn't go. Three-point Lopes lead. I just don't like the pay. Yeah, right now, this, this game just, just doesn't feel good for the Lopes. Means gets the rebound off the glass and in. They are the more aggressive team in the second half. And they've just been attacking inside, just crashing the offensive glass. And Lopes have been caught flat footed a number of times now, and that nine point halftime lead is, is back down to one again. Rayer on the bench with four. Jackson just inside the arc for two. Okay, Jackson, you had that three pointer in the first half. He comes back and knocks down another long distance shot. And He's got a lot of confidence for a guy who's coming off that line. He's got all seven of the Lopes bench points. Seven points from Matt Jackson in nine minutes. Martin out on means. Three-point Lopes lead. 11 and a half to go. Second half. Gittins gets some help from Menzies, trying to free him up. Means. Wide open look. Yolanio right at the shot clock. Nobody home for the rebound. Gittins look out. He's been lethal. Rings out, Labor with the rebound. Of course, of course it's Labor. That's eight points for Labor. He's on his way to another double-double at 18 points, and it's a good job here. Set up a good offensive set right here. Benson. Braun. Little disheveled here. Labor pulls it down, goes around Menzies. Loose ball, Gittins. A quality possession. Gittins, Gittins comes up gimpy on this one here. Like he got stepped on. He's going to have to get a, officials call the timeout, injury timeout. They're going to have to kick him out of the game. Jim Hayford, not a very deep bench. We shall see how Gittins responds after we come back from this break. Lopes up by three, 46, 43 on your view. Phoenix is Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go low. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. We want to remind you that there's just uh, three games, two more after uh, this one before the looks prepare for that WAC tournament. So two games here at GCU Arena. If you haven't made it out to the game yet, make sure to get that done. 
Saturday against Utah Valley. The team goes head to head at 7 p.m. tip off. If you're not here, tune into our pregame show starting at 6.30. And then a week from Saturday on March 3rd, the Lopes will end out their season against Cal State Bakersfield. And then the show is going on the road to the WAC tournament. March 7th through the 10th is for the women and the men. The men's tips off on the 8th. The whole Pals team will get to work on the 7th. Tickets for are sold out for GC for those sessions. However, if you call the ticket office at 602-639-8979, GCU will have information on how you can get tickets or trying to obtain more from the WAC and other schools. And then as the tournament gets closer, individual game tickets will go on sale that day. So if you're in the Vegas area, be sure to support Nicole Powell, Dan Marley's squad as the Lopes get their first chance to make a dent in that WAC tournament play coming up. Milano trying to move baseline. Matt Jackson is going to be called for his fourth personal foul. Frayers on the bench with four personal fouls. And, and I know I've been hard to run him off the three-point line, but Matt Jackson, unfortunately, on that time, he got up so close to the defender with his body at the three-point line that he had no chance to recover once the uh, player, Yolanio, wanted to try to put it in drive. And, and knowing the foul situation in that situation, with Seattle in the, in the uh, bonus situation, you can't afford to give up that foul right there in such a tight contest. Get back, use your length with your arms, and realizing if he's gonna go up and shoot it there, all you need to do is get a hand up on his, uh, uh, up in his face. Two point Lopes lead. Seattle out rebounding the Lopes 12 to five here in the second half. Thought they had another illegal screen there. And I thought Matt, uh, Coach Jackson was going to lose. Coach Jackson, Coach Marley would lose his coat, but it's actually going to be a defensive foul. Fighting over that screen is going to send Josh Braun to the free throw line here. Boy, I might tell you, both teams are already in the bonus. They'll be in the double bonus before too long and be shooting free throws the rest of this way. I told the officials we wanted to get out of here at 8:45, Barry. But you told them that? Yeah, I, I think they're doing this on purpose. Because wow. We're gonna, at, at this rate, with all these fouls they're calling here in the second half, we'd be lucky to get here at 9.15. I think they listen to it. Mings checks out. Gittins apparently okay. Checks back in, but Hill remains on the floor with the ball right now with four personal fouls. Moves to his left. Now back to the right. Swarm there. Gittins trying to move on Braun. Slashes in. Right hand off the glass. And how about Rashad Gittins? Well, he is quick. He had that uh, drive in the first half where he came in there with the left hand and got it over the top of the defense. And that one was right hand jumping off the right foot. I mean, that's an athletic move. Averaging 10.1 points per game, 15 in the game tonight. Jackson, Benson. Braun looks for three. Oh, it rings it out. Kavass. Nice box out by Kavass on Matt Jackson. And Seattle, my goodness, with a chance to take the lead here. 9.30 to play. Lopes 5 of 19 from the arc. Under nine and a half to go. Hill. He wants three and the lead. And he gets it. First lead of the game comes on a three-pointer from the top. I mean, Talk about scuffing along here in the second half. Just 13 points for the Lopes. And offensively, they haven't had the defense to get their offense going. They got to get Oscar Frere back in his game to let their best defender back on the court try to create some easy opportunities for them. 240 and counting for the drought. Labor's going to be fouled. Well, Labor has really played a heck of a basketball game tonight. Whether keeping the big fella away from the paint on the offensive end or timely baskets as Seattle continues to put pressure on the Lopes and actually have regained the lead. It's been Labor and Braun a couple times now that have put the Lopes, either extended the lead or now in this case, tied the game back up from the free throw line. Now Menzies on the floor. Three personal fouls. And Labor connects. Six of seven from the 
free throw line tonight. I, I thought he was perfect. Yeah, he did have that one miss, but those two were pressure free throws, and there's a lot of time left. I don't know how much pressure, but any time you, you had a double figure lead, you see it vanish, you're down one, you step from the line. That's those are big free throws. Let's push it back out, one out. The boss can't grab it. Both teams coughing this thing up quite a bit. And Lope got 14 turnovers. That's 11 now for Seattle. It might be one of those situations, whoever takes care of the basketball better down the final stretch of this game might come out with a victory. Milstead in for Benson. He has the basketball. Cutting in, leaving it underneath for Jackson, the left hand off the glass. See, I love that penetration by Milstead because he didn't try to flip the ball behind him. He found the guy down underneath, and Matt Jackson has worked on that move to the hoop about 10,000 times over a quarter of his short basketball career. Bill trying to work on Martin. Step back, not there. Martin able to pick up the loose rebound. And Martin loves it. That is a good stop right there. He'll very athletic player. I know he's on the floor with four fouls, but he's shutting down there, and he got the four. Driving labor, float or not there. Loose ball, Kavas. The Seattle lead lasted 27 seconds. They try to battle back. And the charge by Gittins. Is that Martin again? My yeah. favorite Martin down on that defensive end. Slides his biscuits here. He just guesses right. He just guessed to this right spot, got in front of Gittins, and threw that charge. Alessandro Labor, 20 points in the game, eight rebounds, looking for that double-double. He has been a big factor in this game tonight. Oh, I just like the way this freshman goes about his business. And he was aggressive early on on the offensive rebounds and looking for his shot. I love the little step back, Jay. That, that will narrow us. You know, second chance points always big in the basketball game. And he, he plays with a player that's kind of beyond his, I don't know, uh, you know, basketball IQ for such a younger player. Maybe it's that international play as they start playing more competition against better players at a younger age. But it doesn't seem like the moment is ever too big for him at any point in time during his freshman year. And I, I remember when, when Blumberg started out the season as the starter, you yeah. thought he was going to be the one that was going to be ahead of uh, other two bigs in the, in the rotation, but it's been labors down the stretch here that's been doing most of the damage for that freshman group. Hey, fans, and Pearson's GCU softball team is ready to roll this week in the GCU Purple Classic. Come out to the new GCU softball stadium. It is awesome, and support the Lopes this Friday starting at 5 p.m. They square off against the Purple Eagles from Niagara University right there by Buffalo, followed by a 7.30 shootout with the Huskies of Houston Baptist. GCU softball is on the rise. Coming off a whack regular season title. Purple Eagles from Niagara. Right there on the Niagara frontier. I spent some time in Buffalo, so oh, did you? it's oh. a little chilly up there by the Niagara frontier. The lake affects no. I'm sure the Purple Eagles are a little chilly here, but I think they'll probably take it. I don't know a thing about Buffalo. I think, I think that's where they filmed that TV show, The Office. So isn't that filmed up there in Buffalo, or is that Scranton? Scranton, Scranton. PA. Yeah, I yeah, think it's Scranton. Yeah. You're right. The Natural was filmed there. Yeah, they got the Buffalo Redford. Bills up there, right? They do. They have a hockey team. They do. They have the Buffalo Sabers. Sabers. Yeah. 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 French Connection. Anyway, I digress. Labor turning. I Talking nothing, hockey. I got nothing I can add to the hockey. I don't know. You know I know a few things They had the Buffalo the Braves there. McAdoo. That's before my time. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie D. Oh, no, Bob McAdoo, though, as a Carolina great. I should know a lot about that. Did I say that. Bob or did I say Ben? No, I should know. Yeah. I think you said Bob McAdoo. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, but he, you know, Bob's been in, in the NBA for a long time, won those championships with the Lakers. He's actually down there still coaching for the uh, Miami Heat. He's an assistant coach down there in Miami, doing a great job. Yeah, Randy Smith was on that Braves squad. Played in the old Memorial Auditorium. The old odd. <laughs> He's probably went Quite to the venue. Did you go to some of those games there? I, was, I lived in the odd. 13 seasons in the NHL. Labor, how about that money from the line? He's this really been a huge story. Yeah, he's on his way to a 30-point game, possibly. Keeps doing these trips to the free throw line. Lopes to stop. Five-point Lopes lead. The box 
slashing in. Left hand floating in up over the top of Matt Jackson. He's not just a three-point shooter. Yet you, you, you think the kid just lives out there behind the arc and so silky smooth, but he has got the ability to put the ball on the floor and be effective. Taylor Laver was up top, took the feed from Martin and didn't put it home. Hill moves past Milstead. Gittins. Cuts in, loose ball, oh, he is able to retain it. Kavats, Mims. In the corner, baseline, popping, out. Jackson with the rebound. I think somebody greased these rims. <laughs> a number of balls have been able to slip out of there. They spin around in there, they move around a couple times before the being spun back out. Milstead, good! Damari Milstead with a huge three-pointer. Guys, but money, Damari Milstead came in 7 of 12 from the arc. Yeah, the, the bench loves it, the crowd loves it. That was a big bucket by the young freshman. Approaching six minutes to go, second half. Six-point Lopes lead. Oh, my. Wow. Oh, my. Looks like a good double Milstead. team, and then... Someone got a little too aggressive and reached in and got a piece of the wrist, but I love that one by Milstead. He acted like he was gonna come off of that screen by the big. Defender snuck down underneath the screen, left the space wide open. Milstead doesn't hesitate. How about the job by the freshman, Labor Milstead here in the second half? Milstead and Braun getting some instruction during the free throw. Milstead instructing Jackson. Chess match for Jim Hayford, first year head coach, doing a great job with Seattle University. Braun. Looked right, nobody home, now Milstead. 10 on the shot clock, wants it back. Braun pulls down, looks inside, steps back, short, tip back, Martin not there, pulled down by Kavas. Means, under five and a half. Kavas. Long three, not there, Martin. That, that one's where Devin Booker and the guys in the NBA shoot it from. I thought they could have worked that ball around, got a better shot than a 26-footer. Milstead, some help from Labor. Labor open for three, did he do it? Oh no, tip back, Martin can't get it. Loose ball, Braun muscles away by Means. Fresh 30, Labor, floater, left hand, and it doesn't drop. Had some time on the shot clock. Means moves right, high off the glass, short. Labor with the rebound, quickly up to Milstead. Open real estate, Damari Milstead off the glass. Wow, good job of getting that ball and then recognizing, having the court vision and awareness to find a outlet, not so much on the wing, but really in the center of the court. Milstead with those jets, nobody was gonna catch him. Long three by Hill off the mark. Trying to claw their way back now. Long threes by Kavas and Hill off the mark. Milstead jogs his way up. 4-15 and counting. Martin near side, looks up top for Labor. Ooh, right over Lulonio. Gutsy pass. It was because the pass was deflected and somehow Labor kept his concentration and still corralled the ball and knocked it in. 7-0 run for the Lopes. Under four to go. Kavas from the arc. Oh, You've got to get a hand in that gentleman's face when he's at the arc. That's three threes for Kavas. 61-54, 3-51 remains here from GC Arena in Phoenix. We'll be right back. Our armed forces' heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service.
I'm Christian Talon, and I'm earning my bachelor's in information technology at GCU. Cyber threats are a growing problem for companies and individuals alike. A lot of resources are under scrutiny of attack. I found it my purpose to try and help businesses and defend themselves against those attacks. One of the great benefits to going to GCU is that we as students get access to the state-of-the-art IT labs where we can put to practice the information that we're learning in our classrooms. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. Well, we've got a seven-point game here, and uh, fans are on their feet, not just because uh, Book's on top here, but it's also T-shirt time. And who's throwing out the T-shirts? Devin Booker and Jared Dudley in the house tonight, taking in. Oh, this looks like Dudley sharing with the fans. He's like, hey, I want a memento from this game. He's enjoying his first game here at GCU Arena. Meanwhile, this is how it's looking in WAC Conference action. The Roos, they are still hot to trot, winning their fourth straight tonight, taking things, taking care of business at UTRGB. The final there, 83 to 59. And it's a close one at Cal State Bakersfield, Utah Valley, with a one point lead at the break. The Aggies bouncing back, trying to get back in that win column after a couple losses right now. New Mexico State on top of Chicago State, 68 55. But the score, we are saving the best for last. At Seattle University, Grand Canyon gets the big victory. 64-57, the final. Bree Mobley, 21 points, 12 boards. Grand Canyon University now within the top couple teams in the WAC with just a few games to go. Nicole Powell's ladies looking great heading into that WAC tournament action. I see Bree Mobley with the double-double. Yeah, the, the, the women are peaking at the right time. Yeah. And men need to find their game. They're doing a good job. Can they finish it off here? Well, it's flat from Damari Milstad. Gittins brings it up. Means with four personal fouls. Hill with four. Menzies with four. Gittins with three. They're on the floor. Gittins tried to make the sweet move. Went out. Lost the ball. Three eighteen timeout on the floor. Seven point Lopes lead. Hayford chatting with Hill. Marley talking with Labor. Yeah. We'll be right back here Saturday against Utah Valley. Mark Pope is Wolverine. Keontae Vernon. Not a bad night for Keontae. Got in some foul trouble. Yeah, I mean, he, he got his chain yanked early on in this game as well. I mean, he got pulled out of the game for taking some ill-advised shots. And then he came back. It was aggressive defensively, aggressive on the glass. I love this one right here. Just a little jab step like he was going to go baseline and then took the big bella back to the middle and used the rim to protect the ball. And slides his feet defensively, picks up the charge. So his energy, I think, defensively was much better after a uh, quick trip to the bench. The GCU Baseball 9, led by head coach Andy Stankiewicz, are out in San Diego this weekend, playing in the Tony Gwynn Legacy Tournament after a record-breaking attendance weekend for the season opening series versus TCU. You can no doubt bet the Lopes will be glad to be back in the new Brazzle Field at GCU Ballpark for the GCU Classic that starts Friday, March 2nd, 6 p.m. first pitch against the Matadors from Cal State Northridge. Boy, you should check out the new ballpark. You know why Great they call crowd. it Brazel Field? Coach Brazel. Yeah. Yeah. Legendary Coach Brazel. Yeah, I got to get over and check out a game. I've heard a lot about their uh, the baseball program. What is it, hitting or pitching? What's their forte? A little bit of both. Jake Wong, man, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jared Janzik from TCU on Friday night. It was like a pitching duel, back and forth. Now, is he, is he a fireball or is he striking? Oh, yeah. is he 96 striking? topped off. Excuse me? 96. There was upwards of 90 scouts at the game. Yeah. I think a lot of them, obviously, to see, like, Luke and Baker, the big first baseman from TCU and Janzik. But I bet many of them walked away yeah. keeping tabs on one Jake Wong. 96. That's the fastest. That's for the, the pros throw it, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Big time. Milstead, Labor. They were trying to move on Menzies. Baseline too heavy. Jackson put it down. Menzies. He gets oh, called and he's going to take a seat. That's five on Aaron Menzies. Aaron Menzies. He had a better second half than he did to start the game. He's going to finish two points short of a, a double double. He's got 11 double doubles on the season, but 
I'd say just Labor's just being aggressive, attacking the chest of the big shot blocker. That's twice now in the, in the two game set that Menzies has been disqualified with foul trouble. Right. Fouled out in that first matchup and now again here tonight. Labor tries to add to the lead and does. The lead is up to eight. Yeah, they got it back to eight. I mean, it was nine and a half, and Seattle came storming out of the locker room, took a one point lead, but that was short lived. GCU regained the lead in less than a possession. I think 30 seconds about all it was, and then they've got able to bit by bit pile back onto that. And they got it back up to where it was at the half with under three to go. They've been solid from the free throw line in the second half. Have the Lopes there, 10 for 10. Gavas swarm. Oh, we're going to call Martin. Yeah, Martin, he was there with the paper and a cup of coffee, but the officials are saying that he was inside the restricted area. At least his heels were on the restricted area line. I didn't get a look at it, but it was a quick, decisive call by the officials, so I believe him. Kavas, 16 points, three of 10 from the arc. His free, first free throw attempt. Got them both. Okay, but now Lopes just need to get a quality possession here. Doesn't have to be necessarily a result of the field goal, but a quality possession where they get a clean look at the basket and have defensive balance after the shot. Do not turn the basketball over here. I'm going to take a corner three that could lead to an easy run out for Seattle U. Oh, goodness. That's his fourth. And, and that one doesn't make a whole lot of sense because if you're going to let 15 seconds come off the clock and then foul the guy some 35 feet away from the basket with a forearm and not really making a play of trying to steal the ball, it's going to be a bit silly. Hey, for telling them to back off. Freyer back in, he's got four. Labor takes a seat. Milstead connects. Man, they've been money from the line. They have been money. Milstead and the three that he knocked down, and Labor's all the, all the uh, free throws he's been able to connect on. Baseline kick back out. Ooh, Hill. That was over in Avondale. Yeah, remember he had, he had the four personal fouls, and he comes back in, knocks that three down. Now he's shooting 50% from the floor. He's four of eight, a dozen points. GCU's bench out scoring Seattle 16 to six. Seattle riding the three-game winning streak. Thomas. Yeah, they, they just lost Davis on that one. That was after kind of a delay of game because there was some water on the floor. And then Vic Menzies, he came back with a force there. He had that little right chicken wing working on a couple possessions with the lefty hook. And that kid is just too fast. He's a road runner. He just goes close right guy by guys. He goes to the line. And that's that last one by Hill. Too much range. He got his feet set, shoulder square, and knocked it down. So, it, you know, a six-point deficit, two 21 to play, There's a lot of time left. And playing against a hot team right now that's, you know, like I said, averaging 83 points a game. They haven't come close to that number tonight, but you know that they can put 10, 12, 14 points up in a short period of time. 65 59. Lopes looking to win their seventh conference game, their 18th overall. What a stop to Seattle's three game winning streak. Seattle eight and three in the conference. The team ahead of the Lopes. Martin presses on. LeBron, Milstead. Peel off a little bit, getting steps back. He'll afford to pick up any fouls. Red Hawks in trouble. Milstead is waiting patiently until he gets the sign from Marley. 10 seconds, Marley gives instruction. Jackson moves to his right hand off. Martin looks for three. Good! Jared Martin with a huge three-pointer. 
Well, that was good patience offensively, good execution. They wanted to throw the ball in the Lavers, couldn't get it down to him. Swing, swing, find Martin coming up out of the corner. Martin with his first points. Loose ball, how about Jared Martin? Takes it to the four. Well, that was a nice play by Braun to get the ball ahead to a streaky Martin. Double figure lead, just 125 to play. Hill brings it back down to Elanio. Oh, Braun put a hand in there. I thought he hit ball, but this official calling it tight against the Lopes. Hill just lost that ball. He, he wanted to kick it over to one of his mates, and they had turned they had turned their heads. He tried to get the ball back, but Ron was quick to jump on it and just gives it ahead to Martin. That was an inopportune turnover there. Just the 11th turnover for the Red Hawks, but they're going to regret that one, and then they go to the line and come up empty on the first attempt. But they're in the double bonus. They'll get a second attempt, but I don't really like that foul by Josh Braun. I know he didn't make that free throw. The turn to work out, but you don't want to stop that clock. You got a double figure lead under a minute and a half to play. Keep that clock ticking. He ended up missing them both. Ouch. That'll hurt. Got a foul here. I think 115 to go. You're down 11. I sitting back unless they're throwing in the towel. Seattle 5 of 9 from the free throw line in the second half where the Lopes are 12 of 12. This is over. They're going to let them take this thing all the way down to under a minute before they have to shoot with a double digit lead. Oh, he Whoa. lost it. Onio picks it off. Means looks for three. Not there. Labor climbs up and grabs it away. That'll do it. Yep. Double double. Time on Alessandro Labor. 26 points, 10 rebounds. I think Milstead got himself in a bad way right there. Didn't want to turn the ball over. Call the timeout. Make sure you get a good, good possession here. At least get the ball over the midcourt strike. Send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, just a week out before March, and the conference tournaments will happen, and then, of course, the madness begins. So looking at the top 25, Virginia, Michigan State, Villanova, Xavier, and Duke rounding out the top five. And meanwhile, Scott, Star Hills at the number 10 spot, and Gonzaga at number six. Looking at the second half of the top 25, Arizona there in the 14th spot, 21-6 record, but right now it's a close game at Oregon State. The two trading leads with about a three-point differential. And in the final top 25 at 22, St. Mary's, followed by Houston and then Florida State rounding out the top 20. Did you beat Duke? Beat North Carolina? Soundly. They're five and you're 10? Doesn't matter. Throw the records out when those two teams play. Because we proved earlier in the season when we were I mean, 25 and they were nine. Smack them. They came to Chapel Hill. They were fouled by Gittins. Gittins is going to foul out. Curious foul there. I mean, you, you were just down 11 with a minute and 15 to play. You chose not to foul. Now you're down 11 with 45 seconds to play. And I guess it's more dire straights to take the quick foul. And, See if they can't get somebody to miss a couple from the free throw lines, what just happened. But yeah, I, I, I want, we're going to be out here closer to 9 15 than 8 45 if this continues. I think you yeah, just talk to talk a little nicer to the officials before the game next time on Saturday. I, I'll, maybe I'll bring some cupcakes or some oh, sweets cupcakes. or something like that. You know, I'll bribe them with some, oh, some sugary sweets. Idea. Yep. I don't know if you can say that. Can you say about bribing the officials? Uh, like, well, no. I, with, with cake, uh, baked goods, I think it's okay. Baked yeah. goods, yeah. I, I don't know if I can bring the, if I didn't bring the Benjamins, that would it's be bad. It's not really but. a bribe. It's, if they could just exp Yeah, I, I'm not let, saying Let them play. Just let them play. Just, just, just put your whistles in your pocket. Yeah, I don't yeah, care yeah, what yeah, happens. Yeah, just put your whistles yeah. in your pocket. Let these kids play. They're too big and too strong. I mean, we've been shooting free throws now for the better part of 30 minutes with the, the, between the one and one and the double bonus. Labor matching a career high, 28 points. Means takes it all the way to the glass. 37.7 to go. Oh, now what? We go on the see, scores no, table no, for something. See, Coach, they heard you. Coach this Marley, is, this, see, this this is really they heard you. Yeah, and this gives the uh, Seattle a chance to set up their defense, too, which Coach Marley didn't want. He wanted his team to be able to get the ball inbounds quickly. Now they got to work on their, their press inbounds play here to try to get the ball into the 
shooter that they want to be able to send to the free throw line. And Seattle's identified him is going to try to keep him or them away from being the one that collects his ball. You know, Labors has been money. You don't want him getting it. Matt Jackson knocked out free throws. Josh Braun generally pretty good. Got the Labors, and they foul. Looks like it's going to be the season sweep. I didn't keep fouling and drugs this thing out as long as they want, but as Chick Hearn used to say, the butter's hard and the eggs are cool, and this one is in the fridge all nice and neat for the Lopes to be able to take this, you know, get off this three-game skid and snap a three-game streak of see the, um, I almost said the Seahawks of Seattle U. New career high for Alessandro Labor. Can't go wrong with a Chick Hearn reference. Cheeky baby. And that's a even 30. Second career double double for Alessandro Labor. Yeah, how about him? Is that 30? That's a career high for that kid, isn't it? Yeah, 30. Tied my career high. He gets one more point, he'll tie and two more to break it. At 32 one time, a uh, 31 in college. That was really? perfect. 12 of 12 from the field. Oscar Freyer! Bam! Had to wait for Oscar Freyer to take off from down that right wing. He had a couple attempts he could have maybe earlier and didn't get one, but that was a nice dunk. Two hand flush. Hill throws it up. Rebound, Freyer. Six, five seconds off the clock. Lopes are gonna win it. They're improved to 18 and 10. Seven and five. And they accomplished what they needed to do to close it out. The first of three on their home court. Snapping a three-game losing streak. Perfect 16 of 16 from the free throw line in the second half. Alessandro Labor with 30 points, leading all scores. While the Red Hawks dropped to eight and four in the conference. Yeah, they, they really played well. There was a little stretch there in the second half where they kind of lost their focus and their intensity, and the Red Hawks were out working them, but then they quickly found their stride after falling behind by one. I like the way they did it with defense and a methodical approach to the offensive end, and I love the way they concentrated down the stretch. Except for one turnover, they took care of the basketball in about the final eight minutes of that basketball game after having 16 early turnovers. Took care of the basketball, got good shots each and every time down. All right, we'll be back with the post-game press conference from head coach Dan Marley. We'll have our post-game stats, our play game. And revisit Scott's three keys. Looks win it. 76-64. We'll be back with more on your view. In addition to watching WAC basketball on your mobile device, you can now watch selected games on your TV through Apple TV, Droid TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Brought to you by the Western Athletic Conference and Blue Frame Technology. Get ready for the WAC Indoor Track and Field Championships, February 22nd through the 24th in Napa, Idaho. Who will be the next WAC champion? Grand Canyon University, Arizona's private Christian university, is a top tourism market bustling right in the heart of Phoenix. Join the student team at the GCU Hotel, Canyon 49 Grill, and coffee shop GCBC for real-world learning opportunities. Hospitality students can gain workplace skills and leadership training on the GCU Championship Golf Course featuring brand new amenities. Across every enterprise, you have the chance to network, learn, and grow. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu. It's the most wonderful time of the year, the 2018 WAC Basketball Tournament at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. March 7th through 10th, 14 games, four days of WAC Madness. Be there for the triumph. Get your tickets now at orleansarena.com. See you in WAC Vegas. 76-64, the final score. The Lopes win it over Seattle University. There was, we look at our final stats. Field goal percentage, pretty even up. Wow. <laughs>
7 of 22 from the arc, 9 of 28. Coming on strong there late for the Red Hawks. 19 of 21 from the free throw line. 16 of 16 for the Lopes in the second. Rebounding margin in favor of the Lopes. Bench points big for the Lopes. Turnovers, 16 for Seattle U, 12 for GCU. Big one. Free throw line was kind in the second half for GCU, but they delivered. Alessandro Laver once again rebounding after he kind of dropped down a little bit, and hopefully he's hitting his stride. They'll need him here down the home stretch. He was fantastic. I mean, 30 points out of the freshman, and he did it in a variety of different ways. I like the way he did some good low post moves. He made some offensive rebounds. He stepped out behind the arc. Just a wonderful job by that young man. Well, how about we name him our player of the game? There's a stretch. Career high, 30 points in the game. Uh, it, it, it was wonderful. I love that one right there. He feeds a cutting Matt Jackson with after the offensive rebound, and then I love that. You know, just he bangs him with the right shoulder, throws the lefty hook over the top, a little pick and pop for three-point shot. Stretch the seven foot three Menzies all the way out behind the arc, and then the concentration and the finish. Well, that one over the top, that showed some real concentration because that ball was deflected prior to it getting to him, but nice job sealing his man until the ball was over his head, then releasing Look at that nice double-double. I'll -double. <laughs> tell you what, in 14 of 15 from the foul line wow. for a freshman in a, in a big game, uh, very impressive. 13 to two, fast break points for GCU over Seattle. A big win, let's send it into the post-game press conference area. Kate Longworth and Paul Coro. Well, he can be a hard guy to read. Dan Marley, after a game, we try and guess if he's going to be upset, <laughs> Matt, like happy, what's going to play out. But I've heard as he was walking off the court, he hit, he hugged his daughter. He was slapping high fives with fans. So it seems like he was a happy guy. Was this a good rebound victory for the team? Yeah, definitely a lot happier guy than maybe Monday and Tuesday in that practice facility. It wasn't pretty in there. But tonight was a lot better. And it was exactly what he talked about earlier in the day today. Like They don't have to shoot lights out to win games here. They just need to get back to their defensive core. And uh, they held them 40% shooting, really shut them down like they did in Seattle. But Ali Laver was, was the biggest part of this. The fact that when Seattle came back and took the lead for the only point that they ever had a lead in the game, they just pounded it repeatedly to him on five straight trips and kind of reestablished. You know, he fouls out their big guy. He gets to the line regularly. And they made free throws tonight. Huge difference between this and the loss at Bakersfield Saturday where they could have still stayed in that game if they had shot free throws like they did tonight. We've watched the maturation of Laver throughout this season. If he continues to do what he did tonight, how can he add to this team heading into that March tournament? Well, it's so important because he just opens up everybody else's game. You know, now they have open three-point shots because defenses are collapsing on him. He's, his footwork is so good, and there's touches in there. They have to foul him. He converts when they do foul him. He makes free throws, and he's, he's physical in there. He doesn't mind mixing it up. He really helped him out on the boards tonight. That was probably just as almost just as important as the points. He gets 10 boards. That matches his uh, season high, too. So it's just he he wants this too. You know, he was a guy that back you think back to training camp, he was mad that he wasn't starting. He was competitive, you know. He wanted to be the guy and he just gradually worked and worked and worked into the, to being this guy that they can count on now. And we know in these final few games, uh, Dan Marley wants to see his trio of seniors really step it up. Tonight, there were points in the game where maybe they weren't doing their job or the shots, shots weren't falling. Dan Marley talked to those guys. It seemed like they would bounce back as well. Well, I don't even need to ask you. I'm going to go straight to the source. <coughs> uh, obviously, a much needed win. I thought our guys played really hard. Um, Seattle's a really good team, been playing well. Um, did a great job. I think, you know, Alessandro. Uh, just keeps getting better. Tells you what hard work does every night. So uh, proud of him. Proud of everybody. Um, had a tough week of practice, and our guys bounced back. So uh, that's a good start. Now we got to just keep it rolling. We can't, you know, revert back. So very proud of our guys. Uh, like I said, that's a really good Seattle team, and it's a big win. Ah, uh, just Ollie, I guess. Um, just the way you know, goes to free throw line for a freshman, composed, uh, going to him. Um, keeps learning, um, but I thought other guys, you know, stepped up. I thought Josh was good, um, looking for a shot a little bit more. I thought Damari, um, you know, coming in, didn't play a whole lot in the second half and came in and finished the game, uh, made a huge three. Um, he's got a lot of marbles. Uh, he's not afraid, which is good. So that's good. And I just, you know, I was happy with everybody's effort. I thought, uh, you know, Matt Jackson, really good. Uh, you know, Jared getting some more minutes helped too. So, you know, I'd probably, um, going to have to start shortening the lineup a little bit and going to guys that uh, have been in that situation. And Matt and Jared 
have been in that situation. Uh, and they know what it takes to win. So um, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, you know, that's when we get out rebounded, we never win. It means we're not playing hard enough. And, uh, you know, I think the first half we were good at, the second half we had lapses. Um, uh, you know, three point line, we did really well in the first half. Second half, we made some mistakes again. So we got to stay focused for 40 minutes and um, keep not make the same mistakes, which I thought we did in the second half. But uh, we made some big shots. Like I said, Ollie going to free throw line, Jared hit a huge three. Like Damari making that three was great too. So, um, yeah, I put him through the ringer uh, this week. Um, we were in a lot of sprints uh, Monday and Tuesday, wore him out, and uh, nobody complained. Uh, everybody went after it. Um, and hopefully that kind of sunk in and they, they understand how we have to play. Well, yeah, and, you know, it helps when Ollie's shooting 15 of them, you know. Uh, you know, Ollie shot 15 and Josh shot four. Uh, Damari's a good free throw shooter. So uh, those three guys are probably our, our best free throw shooters. So it helps when those guys get the line and, and step up and make them. When they push back and put the lead with that and over, go to Ollie every time at that point? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've said all along, Ali's kind of our go-to guy now. Uh, not only can he stretch the floor and make some threes, but he's really good in the post. And uh, at his size, not only can he make baskets, but he can get fouled and put them in foul trouble and get to the line. So uh, that's what it's been pretty much uh, this whole second half of the year. Just, you know, he's got to he's got to make, uh, you know, he's got to take care of the ball a little better. But like I said, he's got no fear, which I love for a guy who's a freshman point guard and throw him in a big position. Uh, he didn't play much in the first half. And obviously, I, I didn't think he played well in the first half. And I would struggle a little bit if I was going to go to him. But uh, Casey was a little tired. So I said, I'm going to go to him and never took him out because he, he handled it real well. Matt was one of the few bright spots last year. Matt is, uh, has been very lively in practice. Uh, Matt's biggest problem is he's not aggressive in games. And he came out right away in the game and was very aggressive, uh, looking for a shot, not turning down shots. So I thought he played really well on both ends of the floor. And uh, his body, you can just tell he feels a lot better. He's been through a lot of injuries last year and obviously sat out. But uh, he's been really good in practice, so he deserves more time. Yeah, they're one of the best three-point shooting teams, uh, you know, in the WAC and in the country. They really just spread the floor and uh, rub screens and, and, you know, four out, one in. And, you know, with our size, sometimes we have big guys out there trying to guard littler guys. So uh, not only are they good at penetrating and get to the basket, but then you got to stop them from shooting threes, which we did a good job in the first half. But, you know, second half, they got it going. It was great. You know, Jared and I are, are good friends, and uh, he's been telling me he's going to go to the game. So I finally uh, texted him and said, you know, it's time. Uh, we're running out of games. Uh, so he came, and he said he was going to bring Book, which was great. So it, it's, it's great for our guys. They stopped in the locker room and said hi to him. So uh, both those guys are class individuals. So I've known Jared for a long time, and obviously uh, Devin, uh, the type of player he is and how just mature he is. Um, I didn't remind him that we held him scoreless when they beat us by 50 at Kentucky, but – He's the one guy that didn't score for him, but they still beat us by 50. But I'm glad that those guys came and saw our atmosphere, and uh, hopefully they'll go back and, and kind of spread the news a little bit. What was the interaction like in the locker room between them and the players? Oh, I just went in there and, and, and uh, introduced them, and then I ran out here to talk to you guys. So I'm yeah. sure, no, so I'm sure it was great. I mean, those guys, uh, my guys are huge NBA fans and huge Phoenix Suns fans, and uh, they've played against uh, uh, Devin uh, in the summers. They come here and play, and so they know him and. Uh, I'm sure they appreciate him coming. What's, uh, what's going to be most important Saturday to change what up there? Uh, just play with this kind of intensity. Uh, like I said, I don't care. We just got to play hard. Uh, Utah Valley's another team that's playing really well. Uh, a lot of the same thing, uh, you know, four out, moving the basketball, uh, shooting threes, penetration. So same thing that we did tonight, just intensity and, and the will to win. Well, uh, Post-game press conference from head coach Dan Marley. He's happy. Booker and Dudley. Well, why not? I mean, they had a big win here. Snapped a three-game slot. Suns were in the house. They showed out. That was great. I love the fact that the, uh, Dudley and Book went in the locker room after the game to talk to the players. That's pretty cool. Amazing, you know. All these Suns players come out. We've got uh, UNC warming up here for the, the title game when they were out here. We've got uh, LeBron and the Cavs uh, working out here when they're in town. And 
that, that exposure is great, and of course the uh, facilities are here are uh, first rate. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really like the way uh, Coach Marley acknowledges those guys and, and gets them to come out here because I know as a young player when I was at North Carolina, I have guys like Jordan and and uh, Walter Davis and uh, Brad Doherty come back. I mean, it just sets a fire in you, and you can see that. Uh, the, I think the guys knew that they were in the house tonight. They played with a, a very uh, an intensity that we did not see. Uh, Adam on those previous three games. Well, let's revisit Scott's three keys to tonight's game against the Seattle Red Hawks. Well, I thought they did a nice job mixing in a fast break tempo. They see they had 13 points. They also had some, uh, I guess you call it secondary break opportunities where they were able to play fast off of some of their good rebounding tonight. And, and then they mixed that in with a methodical approach as well. Didn't let the game just get helter skelter. I love the fact that uh, they knocked in a seven three point shots. Didn't shoot the percentage that they wanted to, but they made them some big ones when they needed to and then I like the fact that they also attacked those bigs in the paint they didn't play scared of the shot blocker inside in fact they went into his chest several times ended up fouling out of the game later in the ball game but the points in the paint the offensive rebounds the drives to the basket were all a contributing factor tonight and he mentioned Jackson and Milstead Milstead uh, he's fearless seven points in 12 minutes. Good to see that contribution from most players. They'll need some depth. Yeah, it really did. I mean, and Casey Benson, you look at his line, it's like the man didn't score, but he, he got the offense going. He had five assists and zero turnovers and over 20 minutes of action. So I like the way the point guards played tonight. All right, Utah Valley does come into this week with a huge momentum boost after wins against conference leaders New Mexico State and UTRGV last week. The Lopes lost to Utah Valley early in conference play. They'll look to split the season series. Be sure to tune in this Saturday evening, starting with the Lopes pregame show with Kate Longworth at 6.30 here for GCU Basketball on your view. But that'll do it from here at GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes beat the Red Hawks 76-64. to Please join us again on Saturday when GCU hosts Utah Valley with head coach Dan Marley vying for his 100th career victory here at GCU. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful evening.